Did they really write that about me? No. Can I stop this? Sometimes you can feel I stopped it already. Create a new one? I just need to really use a friend. I just need to like I just save it or someone that's been bullied online. Let them know they're not alone. Yeah, we're gonna support a friend and save a life. For more information, I don't need that. Can you just save that for me? This is this is this is the hotline. This is not one eight hundred. No, no, it was on this book. A message from your friends here at Splash. Do what now? Just save it for me now. Save it as what? Uh, think like a boss. All right, they gotta do the because I gotta. I'm not gonna be ready again. Huh? Save project. This is the guest's headset. So I need my headset, I need the guest headset. And I need the headset for the... I got the guest. Listen, and I have this one, which is a one-sided. Okay, so... My truck will for all your life moving Anyway, yeah, Kevin. Trip. I have two dozen headsets, headsets that's broken. Oh wow. Friday Sunday. You want, do you want the microphone headset, the one that they're going to use? The one, I'm going to use mine, the, the one with the one thing, I'm going to put the, uh, the speaker in. Well, it could rest by me, because I don't have, yeah, there you go. I don't hear anything, yeah, because it's, I don't hear anything with this one either. There we go. Caribbean food in town. Check out Sunsplash Caribbean Bakery and Sunsplash. Restaurant. They got the natural organic juice bar that'll get your day started right. Like the Power Punch, the Veeg Juice, the Mega Green, Roost like the Immortal and the Resurrection. And peep this, they have an extended bakery department yeah, that whips up one. my favorite, the Hot Heart of Red. White or wheat, that's your choice. If you're feeling hungry, just grab a bite. Yeah, Mr. Dawson. You know the last one. Eric. Eric. Right. Mr. Dawson. You know, pretty calm, you'll worry. Certain breakfast, lunch, and dinner, they also cater to vegans and vegetarians. With the Ital stew and the Ital ox, the soul jerk salmon, right, and right, the right, tapia. And of course, you're they set. got the usual curry goat, oxtail, brown stew chicken, jerk chicken, and so much more. I mean, they're well, many yes, and right. they're highly rated. Your best bet is to just stop by or give them a call. They're open Monday through Wednesday, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Thursday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. And Sunday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. They're located at 56 Main Street in Orange, New Jersey and can be reached at 973-395-3777. If they are so hungry days, we need some more food up and we empty plate. Long time we day are we sit on our way. Some splash restaurant are on the place. Everybody be set up, part of taste, yeah. Let your food be a medicine. Eat well, live longer. I'm David Shepard, and I endorse this commercial. All right, Eric, Eric Dawson. Is Eric Dawson. Mornings at 10 o'clock. Hey, bro, you're doing a great job. Love listening to you. On 94.3. Splash Radio. 
Blast Radio 94.3 Brandon Dance Hall Soka Hip Hop and R&B African Disco Oldies but goodies Larger up, Blue Boy, Mr. Lover. Shut it up. Yo, the best station on the planet. Us. Blast Radio 94.3, New Jersey. Well, I don't know what Mr. J represent for 94.3 FM Splash Radio. We'll just splash out the music on them. Your attention, please. This is no ordinary show. Covering news and information for Essex County, New Jersey, and beyond. This is the Eric Dawson Radio Show. Broadcasting from 94.3 Splash Radio. Now, here's your host... Giving it to you like only he can. It's Eric Dawson. Hey, good morning. This is Eric Dawson. This is the Eric Dawson Radio Show, 94.3 FM. Call in number 973-457-8000. Again, 973-457-8000. If you're listening through your mobile device, 213-493-0287. And as always, you can check us out from 10 to 12. We're streaming live on Facebook. And I'm here with my co-host on Mondays and sometimes on Wrap Up Fridays. Yeah, uh, Mr. And, t- and any time he wants to come, <laughs> quite frankly, um, I'm here with uh, Kevin Jenkins. How you doing, man? Thanks. How you doing, man? Hey, I, you know what? I got rest, brother. Yeah, I did too. Well, you know, Saturday and Sundays, man, it's my rest time. Unless I'm doing something or playing golf or something like that. I was asked to play golf this week, and I was like, no, that's okay. I'm just going <laughs> to bring it down. Yeah, I yeah. got so much rest. It, last night I'm up at until one or two, and I'm like, oh come on, you know you get the rest and you feel relaxed, and mm-hmm. you, you know you're sleeping over Saturday and Sunday, and then when you really want to go to sleep to close out the weekend, you can't because you slept so much. You know everybody goes through that, but I ended up going to sleep anyway. So listen, I want to before we start, we we always talk about entrepreneurialism driving yeah. the economic engine, right? Right. This morning I had to go to DMV. Oh, you went there this morning? I had to go this morning before I came here, man. So I was up at 5.30 because I know I needed to be, I knew I needed to be here. And so I wanted to be first person in line at DMV. Obviously, you weren't. I, I was the second person. Well, I was the second person in line. And then this woman comes from across the street. She said she was in the deli and she had taken a bus down. And so she walked in front of the two of us and we just said, you know what? Yeah. what Not heck? even going to deal with that, right? right. And then, and then uh, the the guy fourth, beh- the guy behind me, he says Eric Dawson. So what are you doing here? Right. What, so I said, how do you know me? Turns out he's a guy that I grew up with, man, as a kid on Huntington Terrace. Okay. And yeah. so we caught up, exchanged numbers. But as I was sitting there, I had this idea, and then I realized that it's not a unique one. But it is an idea for people who are interested in making some money, and right now you don't know how to make money. Okay. I'm, see, I tell you, I'm always good for one, Kev. But, but tell me what I you think. I know where you're going with this. Tell me what you think about it. No, because it's already done. I'm going to post the link to the guy who's doing it, and he's currently making six figures in New York. Wow. So it is somebody who stands in line and then sells their space in line. Wow. When you say time is worth money. Right. That's very right? interesting. So, for people who are unemployed... Well, you got to find... I want to know who's making six figures. Oh, I'm going sh- to put the link. he's got a link. heck of a program. I'm going to put the link. But you know what he does, though? Six he stands in line for opera tickets, for Broadway tickets, those things that you don't oh, want to stand sense. in line for, right? I've heard of some people do that over yeah, the years. Man. I mean, it goes back to walking your dog. Fact, it goes back you can, he, you can call him. You can call a number to get him, and you can reserve him to go stand in line for you. Wow. Right. So anyway, while I was standing in line today, here is my. It's a entre- heck of a business. It's a heck of a business, right? Here's an no overhead, but I think the return could be great. Here's an entrepreneurial business for any of you guys who are thinking about this. Well, wow, so, I like that. Right. So let, let let's say you got down there and you stood in line like I did. By the time eight o'clock came, there were about two hundred people in line. 
So now, how do you deal with the issue of when I show up? Well, I'm because people in line don't care as long as they're not further behind. So if you're 12th in line, right, and I move out, you come in, the person who's 12th in line is still 12th in line. They don't care who the people are in front so I'm of paying, them. I'm just paying for a body double. You're paying for a body double, right? <laughs> so so now imagine if you're 200th in line. So how much is in it for in an hour? How oh, dude, hour? I wouldn't, you know what, this is what I would recommend anybody who's seriously thinking about doing this. Hit me up. I'll give you a business plan to do it. Uh, because I think that it, <laughs> look, I'm being very I serious. No, I, I would not cap the amount of money yeah. that I would charge you. You know why? The, it's whatever the market can bear. Right. If it's pouring rain outside, then my spot is worth more than it is if it's a beautiful spring day. If it's 10 degrees outside with blustery winds, my spot is worth more than it is in the summertime. So it's all right? based on Oh, it's, it's all based, based on, on the weather. Market. That's absolutely the market. correct. Right, right, I got you. Now, upset. Yes, looking at me. No, I, you said no, no, here's the upsell of it, oh, right? That's the name of the. That's the no, name no, no, of the business. no, 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 no. The name right? of the business. The name of the business. Uh, well, you could def you could figure out your name, <laughs> right? I'll, I'll charge you to come up with a name. But here's the upsell to this business. Like today, it was raining. I looked at all the people, man, and probably ninety five percent of people didn't have umbrellas. Mm. So imagine if you went to a job over in New York and you got the cheap umbrella, and now you got them in your car. So along with selling your business of selling your yeah, spot, yeah. you now either rent or sell an umbrella. That's, that's entrepreneurialism. Entrepreneurialism. Wait a minute, and I'm going to go best. further. Here's more upsell, and then with this we can... But you would have to do a market study, too, to find out where those, all those, where, where you do that at. For instance, I think getting tickets at the theater is perfect. I think standing in line at DMV is perfect. That's right. You almost have to do your own market you have study. To do, so to now it. you would have to do that. Yeah, so right, I'm, but I'm right. giving you... I got you. I'm telling you. And so now here's the, here's the last upsell. Great idea, by the way. Right? Thank you, brother. <laughs> Here's the last upset. Actually, you can even have a website. And actually, you can, well, you could have a website. See, you're yeah, now you're thinking. Yeah, I'm thinking. Go ahead. Okay. Right, right. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. I like it. Go ahead. And yeah. so here's the other upsell. You know the folding chairs that they have at soccer games? Like right. the little. You can go to Five Below, get them for five bucks. Right, right. You can rent the chairs. For a dollar. For a dollar. So people who are standing in line, they know when they get there at seven o'clock that they're going to be in line for an hour. Right. So if you're renting chairs too. And you're renting umbrellas on rainy days, right? And then you're also selling your spot. I'm telling you, that's a business, guy. That's a really good business. It's a I very, like very good business. That's pretty sexy, man. Right? It is sexy. And so now, this is why, though. Man, you can you can make twenty five hundred <laughs> in a couple of days. In a, yes. I mean, on a good day like today, if it's raining, you got two. You're making more, and the harder it rains, the and more you make. Everybody wants to pay a dollar to sit in the chair with the umbrella. Or yeah, you can yeah. do a double. You can do the chair and the umbrella. And the umbrella. That's right. So now you offer packages, and I'm being very serious. <laughs> no, we're laughing about it, but I'm being very, very no, serious. No, the reason why we're laughing about it because a lot of people are sitting at home with nothing to do. That's that's absolutely it's, right, Kevin. It's, it's, yeah. Woe is me blaming somebody else for why they can't, or you got oh, guys. It goes, back to, it goes back to your question about people staying home and not paying with it to their mother. There you go. You mother know. and fathers. So, so instead of you looking at government or somebody else, to this just shows you. I was I like literally that. just standing in line today, and I looked and I saw an opportunity. Yeah. So the opportunities it's out like here. rent a car, rent a spot. Rent a, <laughs> that's absolutely right. And you know, you got the guy already there who pulls in every day, and he's got the uh, well, let me ask a question. coffee when, and stuff. Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Was someone out there doing that? No, that's, when I thought just, about it, just dude, that's how it. my brain works. Right, right. It works working well this morning. I like yeah, that. my brain just works like that. So anyway. So anybody that has a son or daughter home not doing anything, or put well, anybody out. that's an entrepreneur, Hey, listen, invest in about 100 umbrellas, you know, keep them in good stead and mm -hmm. put about 100 chairs in your car and find out what your market is, if it's in New York or New Jersey or anywhere. That's right. And um, you're in business. You're in business. Low, right? It's a it's a low startup. Right. It's, it doesn't, it might cost you $500. That's right. And if, if you that. pick the right location, but it the is what the market service, can be. the service has to be. Oh, the service has to be exceptional, man. Yeah, the service has to be Damn. exceptional. you got to be on time. So what's the? It's what's like a concierge. Well, me, right. It, well, it is a concierge. It is a concierge. Well, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. If I'm holding the spot for you, and you right. don't show up on time, right? And then no, no. So, so, so for the for the now, I saw the guy on, um, in an ad. Now, I didn't see the I didn't see the the um, the guy in New York do it until after I got in my car this afternoon. I mean, uh, this morning, and I'm sitting outside of the studio waiting for you to come, right? And I go and Google to see if anybody's doing this guy in New York. And I read his whole, whole article. The way he does it is if you want to reserve him, you have to pay through PayPal. Ah, oh, like that. Ah, so see he what gets I'm saying? his money up there, right? He gets his money. That's absolutely right. 
Well, that's for standing in line at the theater or standing well, in line. Well, whatever. Anywhere. So if you call me and you say, hey, Eric, um, I want to get a, um, I don't know, and like when the Apple, the new Apple right. com uh, phone comes out, right? You don't want to stand in line. You don't feel like standing in line, but you want that Apple. You can hire me to stand in that line for you. Right. You can even hire me to sleep overnight for you. Right. But now you have to pay through PayPal, mm. like it's some system that's set up where your money gets transferred from your account into no, yeah. this yeah. holding account, PayPal and then really once the transaction is proven to be okay, then the money is released into my account. No, I like it. Right? And, and, and so, uh, look, time is money, and if your time is money, right, then make money with your time. No, I, I think it's great. Ooh. I think that's a great idea. I hope somebody's listening, because that's a great idea. Somebody can organize a business strategy for them, not a business plan, because business plans, right. the day you write it is over. It's it's over. A, that's absolutely So right. business strategies are more fluid. But, yeah, I like that, though. So I, I, that, that's one I'm giving to you all. Let's see who does it. If you do it, call me, let me know. I don't even want a percentage from it. I just want to see you be successful doing it. Well, I want a percentage. Let me know because <laughs> we want to invest. If, this, if somebody's pulling that off, no, I want to know. Dude, we'll man. give them the first. Five see, I got, a, I got, a, I got an idea for a I'm name, a but a I'm not going to give that. I'm away. a capitalist, so I'm not going to give that. I'm going to so, make money. You know, so off air, I'll give you the name. Yeah, give and me when, the when name. I give you the name, you can jump out of your seat. You can say, "Oh, Eric, you know what? We need to invest in that." Well, uh, yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, well, when I give you this name, you're going to say that name. And the marketing strategy behind it, which really is, like you said, not a plan, but it's a strategy. Well, well if you're doing it for uh, uh, people that have a net wealth at a certain level, I mean, you can charge them you whatever. And all so, you so the market for me would be New York, Brooklyn, you know, um, you but know listen, Philadelphia. But listen, the, the, the and line at DMV does not actually, discriminate. And you can actually hire out across the region. They, that's what I'm saying. And, 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 and the line at DMV does not discriminate. I don't care how much. You could be... You could be earning a two hundred fifty thousand dollar earner if your now license you is me, suspended. You got me thinking. If your license is suspended, dude, your license is suspended. You'd be standing in that line with your Gucci loafers on, pulled up in your Maserati. You still have to stand that same line as, as the guy with the hoopty is in. Yeah, right. Right, but the market now changes because you, right. your time is you're more valuable service, right? than you're offering the service. Well, what's the um, what's the? You I know, thought I, I like, like this. I like from this. six o'clock to now. Oh, so I what time does the be open? Eight o'clock. Oh, so, okay, so I would have to have somebody there, my, my standing person, t well, maybe 5, 30. Well, but, then here, but here's what you do, right? So, so once they stand in and they sell that spot, they move to the end of the line. Yeah, I like that, yeah. You see what I'm saying? And they just keep moving to the end of the line because that line is from DMV from 6 o'clock. See, look, so I, was, I, believe so that, I believe guys. the person has to be identified as someone that's Let me see some his. loves and some thumbs up if this is brilliant. I'm telling you, wow. this is brilliant. Well, entrepreneurs, I mean, that's a great for a, a young person that's thinking out the box. And college uh, students. And if a person knows how to use social media. Listen, you know what else you could do with it? If you're a college student, you could sit in a chair while you're waiting there to, to sell your spot, and you can get your study done. Well, I mean, well, what are we talking about? I hey, mean, come on. I like that, man. <laughs> you're on a Monday this morning, man. I like that. Woo! And that was with two cups of coffee. Hey, listen, listen. <laughs> I'm a capitalist, so you know I'm going to be calling my friends and make, look, Eric came over to Green. Hey, no, I, but I'm uh, telling you. But, you know, it's all about It's not just for it's, them. It's a, it, listen, we live in a shared economy now. You That's know? absolutely right. We share each other's cars. We're living in single rooms now. You know, you can have a, a, a suite of rooms in a, a apartment building with a kitchen in the basement, gym in the basement, mm -hmm. and the whole millennial community lives there. You know, they have their library there. I mean, housing is changing, you know. the. The, the market of the business place of um, marketing something that's strategic that helps another individual and then uh, then identify helps that helps that individual in a living space or a standing I mean it's out there I like that I'm gonna it's, use that you know it's still you know it's still your idea you know it's still your idea no that's okay listen man so um, I like it. later on today we're gonna have uh, um, the Republican gubernatorial candidate Jack Chitterelli who's gonna call in I I always call him Citarelli. But the apparently the C is a hard C, so it's Chitterelli. Chitterelli is going to call Ch in. Chit a what? Chitterelli. Chitterelli mm -hmm. is going to call in, and we're going to have a conversation with him. Um, he had a, a feisty debate on Thursday uh, with uh, Giordano, the current lieutenant governor, who's also running for uh, for governor. And then we're going to have David Walsh, okay, call in. Um, and I got to say it like this because. We've had, since the emergence of black leadership in the, in the early 70s in Newark, we've not had a white council person. 
we've had Hispanic, but we have not had a white council person. So he's a white guy who's running for council at large. And, 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 and look, and the only reason I'm saying it is because it, it has that time come now? Have we come full circle now where uh, the uh, demographics in Newark are such that um, a, a white guy feels as though uh, in, a, uh, in a mostly uh, black populated urban city, right, and closely followed by Hispanics, that he um, uh, can find a space for his voice to resonate with the people. Well, listen, I mean, thousands, I think that let me just give you an example. Thousands of people came here um, over the weekend um, to, you know, do a crawl to see living, you know, the, the lifestyle of Newark, for instance, introducing all of the new apartment buildings, you know, introducing the restaurants. I think Newark, um, NDD did it, the Newark Downtown um, um, District did it. Mm -hmm. I heard it did a great job. Thousands of people came. It was very successful. So we should give ND, NDD um, a shout out. They did a really good job. But here's the problem. With all of those people coming into town, we don't have the inventory. We don't have the inventory to to um, help all of them. I mean, but it was great to see that much energy um, in the city of Newark and a mm -hmm. lot of young people coming, attempting to move in the city of Newark. So in, it's inevitable that because of our growth, I mean, if it slows up, well, that might not happen for another 10 years. But if it continues to go at the pace that it is, there's a possibility that people outside of being African American or Hispanic will run for office. But the, the, the issue for me is, that, you know, African American leadership, you know, I, as an African American male, I would like to see our community maintain our African American um, leadership from the mayor to the council on down. But this is not the first time Newark has had a diverse council or we have Tony Carino was white. I mean, um, Hank Martinez was Spanish, but he was white, you know. we. You know, we've always had a diverse um, um, government, but in the last couple of years, you haven't seen that. Right. I mean, you've seen just Hispanic and black. And i got to tell you, I believe in diversity. I think if we had a lot more diversity, a lot of the issues that we're, we're attempting to address, we can work in partnership with a lot of other people that might be outside of the system, inside the system, to deal with some of these critical issues. So if we, if we continue the growth pattern that we are, we're going to see more white people or people that are not black or non-Hispanic um, running for office, which they have every right to do if they live in the city and they're paying taxes. So they have every right to do. I don't, I don't see, see for, for me personally, I don't see that as a problem. Oh, I don't know. The, the thing that I believe people see as a problem because, you know, oh, we don't want white people taking over our town. Well, I don't, I don't understand that. Because well, but we've is had, that it, though? Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's, that's at the base. I mean, people say, oh, well, you know, here's the, here's the message. Well, they're outsiders, mm -hmm. right? Well, I got some right. insiders that are absolutely horrible. <laughs> right, well, I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah. I have some insight, so I don't. I don't technically buy that, you know. But I do value. Um, um, well, do you buy this? Do you buy this idea that, um, like, uh, you know, I was a couple, maybe a couple months ago or so, uh, I was in the South Ward, and folks were saying, "Oh, the South Ward is coming back," or is you know, it was on the rise. And I said, "Well, okay, you know, I know that they're doing the towers down there near Meeker Avenue and Elizabeth Avenue, and the park has always been a beautiful place. Uh, and uh, you know, folks who just live over there don't value it the way that it, it should be. Um, but what they alluded to was that because they saw white people and Jews in particular." walking, you know, and, uh, you know, in the community, they said, these people are coming back, and because of that, they believe there now was greater value. So, when you see white folks, does that, is that indicative of a community now on the mend? No, I don't think so. I don't know what those people are talking about. <laughs> but you, but you, I, have I you, can't even, have you not that. heard that before? Yeah, I've heard it before, but I, 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 I still can't understand why people are even talking about it. I mean, you got Pr Prince um, George County, you know, one of the highest um, income African American communities in, in, in Maryland. I mean, I don't even understand. I can't even comment. Look, it, the, the ha to get more people to move in your city from different socioeconomic backgrounds is good for the city, it's mm -hmm. good for our local economy, it's good for uh, um, the future growth of the city. So I believe in inclusion and I believe in. Um, having a diverse community because it brings value. I think diversity brings value. And any African American that says anything different should be ashamed of themselves because that's all we've been trying to fight for is equality and 
inclusion and all of those things. So I don't understand why anybody that's African American will be gloating or happy because they see white people walking down the street. What we should be really focused on is how do we make our city so attractive that everybody in the world wants to be here. We should be promoting our city as a global city. We should be promoting our city as a safe city. You know, we should be promoting our city as a, the education mecca of the world. You know, and I think what's happening is we've been buying so many slogans over the years that we haven't really gotten down to the real issue that will drive growth at the local level, will drive people to come into the city. You know, over the years we did see a lot of um, non-African American Latinos, but they were coming here and buying all of our real estate and, 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 and acting as absentee landlords. If you just look at the Clinton, Clinton Hill section, the city of Newark, mm. you know, look at the dollar retention in the city of Newark when you look into our neighborhood. So I don't buy, you know, the the fact that it's coming back because white people are, um, are moving back in the city. I, it's coming back because I think that certain cities and certain times of their um, evolution, right, um, they grow. And I think Newark is primed to grow again. I'm just questioning the leadership. I'm just questioning, do they have enough business savvy, enough understanding, enough complex, you know, are they engaged in enough complex thinking to have that discussion? I don't see that. Right. I see the capacity of talent that we have run in the city. It's hard. Now, you know, if anybody wants to talk about that, that's fine. So you can't talk about growth. You can't talk about stimulating the economy by selling everybody on slogans. I am against slogans. I'm against declarations and slogans. There you got it. And that is, is that a declaration? <laughs> you, that's, a, that's a somewhat of a declaration. Okay. That's a statement. That's, that's a, a statement. That's a statement. That's a statement. That's a right? statement against so, a declaration. And, and, and I, I wanted to say we have um, Layla Lutu. Oh yes, um, she's yes. coming on at ten thirty. Um, an African American sister, and um, she has partners, and they've built this double Dutch program that has that's nationally renowned. They they were they've been on TV. I mean these these young girls are being recruited all around the world. And the thing that I love about them is that they're focused on building um, bridges for our children, and they have used um, the Double Dutch program to do that. And I would love for her to tell us everything she's doing and give us some background. She's calling in at 1030. You so we should be you expect ever, You ever jumped Double Dutch? Nah, man. Nah. I tried it. I know. It's tough. I tried to call it. It is tough, so What man. about the discipline it takes? I mean, what But they tell you that you just have to look at, at one rope, right? And, like, you know what? But nah, it's no all, all rope, man. Listen, the women, the girls in my neighborhood, man. I was on Mercer Street, man. They were queens of that stuff, and they would, they would be whipping it, man. You know? No, no, I'm saying when you're trying to enter, you you see that rock, right? Can you ever, I can do yeah. the rock, <laughs> but I can't but get, can't do the I jump. can't, I can't get in the jump, man. I can't get it. But man, I, I, you know, if there was a score to be had for doing the rock, I'd be scoring a ten every time. Well, listen, I, I got to tell you, so you know, I'm happy she's going to be calling in, and I'm looking forward minutes. to minutes. I'm looking forward to hearing that. We had. Delacy Davis was the first um, one that um, inaugurated the program, then Anthony Smith. And, you know, tell us what you're doing gives the opportunity to Newarkers to tell us what they're doing. Because there are a lot of Newarkers doing a, a lot, lot of them. great stuff. Man. Yeah. Newarkers are very bright, very smart, very focused, so. very committed. And we love our city, you know. And, um, and I'm excited to have a young lady on the show telling us what she's been doing. You know, I'm pro-women, you know that. Absolutely. And uh, so that's that's a great thing. I'm, I'm happy to see that you have these two hosts coming on, yeah. Republican and, and uh, um, uh, I would hate to say a white, potential white candidate. No, but, but I think that to put it in context, I think that that's, you know, that's the way that I want well, to look, put it. And listen, just, just I, I, for saw, I you, you know how I feel about elected mm -hmm. officials that put their lives on the line. Oh, yeah. Anybody that's running for office, that's a serious, serious responsibility. I mean, and, and then it really exposes you to the level that, you know, sometimes it's just unfair, but it comes with the job. Yes, it does. You know, it comes with the job. So that was that was it. So I know we're going to talk about Trump. Oh, dude. Uh, yeah, we're going to talk about his world um, wind uh, um, well, farm. You know, and what, what, what the, the, the biggest uh, arms deal in history. I mean, really. I mean, incredible. I mean, incredible. We, so we got to talk about it. Undo undoing what Obama you know, was working on with Iran, you know. Uh, but the question, I guess, with that, and we'd love to hear Hold your, on. you know, your your responses to this. What's the number, so she should call? Oh, 973-457-4575. Hold on. 973-457-8000. They were saying that she didn't have permission. Hold on. Oh, wait a minute. Let me see. Hold on. Let me see. Nope, she should be able to call in. All right, call in now. Yep. So anyway, so yeah, I want to talk about Trump, and we definitely want to talk about his 
um, his first stop off on his national whirlwind tour, international whirlwind tour. And I want to talk about, you know, the Saudis, which I'm just interested in how all this is, is emerging. And uh, I want to spend some time in that space. And I also want to spend time on something that I've heard over the weekend about this incident that um, occurred in City Hall last week. I want to talk about that I was told about. Well, which I incident mean, I, I, is that? Because I heard about one too. I, I, you know, I got to tell you something. It, give, it will give me great pleasure to come on your show and not have to talk about any of that. Let's see where she is right now. She's in? No, she's not in. But if she can't get in, she should be able to. I'm concerned because that means that other callers who may be trying to call in can't uh, can't call in. Mm -hmm. So, you know, see if she, if, if, she, if she can get in. Uh, oh, let me do this. Go ahead. Go ahead. But, but one of the things that, um, that I want to uh, be able to... Are you trying to call? Yeah. And you and you is not going. Mm -mm. Uh oh, hold on. Try now. Okay. Uh, uh, we have some technical difficulty with the phone. Mm -hmm. Ah, that happens. Yeah, it does. We may have to take a, a commercial and see if we can figure it out. Still nothing, right? Nope. Yeah, so what we're going to do is, uh, because we want to get this caller in, and then I'm afraid that, you know, we have uh, Jack Cittarelli, who's supposed to be calling in as well, and um, and for whatever reason, well, yeah, let's fix that. The, uh, the line's not working. So I'm going to see if we can take a, a quick commercial break, and when we come back... Um, Welcome to live radio. Hey, man, this is, this, is, this is how it is. <laughs> So we're going to take this break. Several months ago, I would have been like, what's going on, Eric? Now do you see Oh, like, no, man. I'm having my coffee. Yeah, yeah. We can no. fix that. When you, right? when you sit down here, uh, it's, it's um, you know, we're always going to have a little something, but, uh, you know, we'll try to work through it and, 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 and get this going. So um, I'm queuing up a commercial. We'll do this, and we shall be back after this commercial break. On 94.3 FM. Looking for trustworthy tax professionals? Give Impact Corp a call. We will assist you with all your tax needs. We are a team of CPAs and IRS enrolled agents. If you are audited, our audit protection team will represent you at no out of pocket cost. We provide three years audit protection and a year identity theft protection. That's a dial tone. Right. But, but we had a dial tone, but we were, but our people are trying to call in and nobody's able to call in. Tipper, I'm here. I'm here, bro. Hold on. Oh, here we go. I'm back. I'm back. Hey, this is Eric Dawson. This is the Eric Dawson Radio Show. So we got OB1 in, and we're trying to get it working. <laughs> Let me uh, see. And let's see if we get the call-in number. Hopefully, uh, Jack hasn't, um, hasn't called in yet either. Yeah, so... Uh, Anyway, uh, while Obi is is on the case, um, you know one yeah. of the things that um, you know one of the things that I uh, um, so you know what let's move on yeah. to and then to, we can call her back and then we can call her back yeah because I want her to come on yeah uh, but uh, in terms of Donald Trump uh, well. The, we got we we got to explain to folks the the relationship between Iran and and Saudi Arabia. One, uh, you know how they sit in the region. Two, and what the um, I mean I, I'm not sure what the the sh uh, long term goals are with Donald Trump and right. and 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 and. Um, and Saudi Arabia. Now I know he did say something about wanting to strengthen long, um, you know, long time historical uh, relations with, um, you know, with those folks who are supposed to be religious uh, uh, leaders in the, in the Middle East. So I mean, that's part of what he did. Um, but then, secondly, to marginalize Iran. Well, this is the thing that I, I, I was, it was it was strange to me, but no, nothing shocks me with this administration. First of all, everybody knows that's been following foreign affairs for years, know that the Saudis, um, the, the, the Sunnis, and the Shiites have been in conflict for years. But if you look at the Saudis' history, when they talk about terrorism, 
and they talk about you know this whole spreading of intolerance against the West, that was all financed by the Saudis. All of it was financed by the Saudis. So this whole conflict between the Iranians and the Saudis, and then Trump coming in and saying, we're going to prop up the Sunni regime, and then we're going to throw out the Shiite regime, or and, and to give you give it a better way, this weekend, give it give you give you a better perspective. This weekend, Romani, um, Rahani, who was a moderate, who negotiated um, 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 dismantling the um, nuclear arms that Iran was participating in with Obama, won again. So the people of Iran, they're saying, hey, listen, we want a moder more moderate gov government. They chose the person that they thought, again, because this is the second time, um, to, to help them move into the future. So what does Trump do? He goes to, he goes to Saudi Arabia and throws the Iranians underneath a nuclear bus. Right after the election, that clearly showcased that the Iranians and the people that live in Iran, right, the people that live in Iran um, are seeking a more moderate government and a more and, and taking a more global position um, outside of just extreme Islam, but because of what they want to see their country grow, how they want to see their country grow economically. So, so the Saudis. Now, this is very interesting. Well, you remember nine one one, correct? Correct. Do you do you know all of the people that played a role in nine one one? They were all Saudis. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, if anybody has indicated, you know, their hatred for this country more than Iran, who's acting as proxies in, in Syria, who's acting in proxies all over the, the Middle East and Yemen and all of these other countries because they're fighting this proxy war with Saudi Arabia, right? The Saudis were the ones that were actually financing all of this miseducation and financing these future terrorists and financing all of the stuff that's been happening in the last two decades. So when Obama comes and Obama says, hey, listen, I know what you're doing. I know you're out there financing this also. You might want to point the finger at Iran, right. but I got a different issue with Iran, but I had a bigger issue with you on your human rights, what you're doing in your country. So Obama understood, you know, foreign affairs much in a much so, so, so a much different perspective. But, so, it, but is your so, contention that that Saudi Arabia is a greater sponsor of terror than well, Iran? Well, they, they were the ones that were financing these schools. These Muslim schools, they were financing these Muslim schools and developing future terrorists. I call them future terrorists because what they were saying, they were using the Quran as an opportunity to, 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 to sell a false doctrine, right, about jihad, right? So now the Saudi Arabian, they financed that. They were the ones that were financing. The proxy war between Saudi Arabia and Iran is all internal within the Middle East, right? So now Iran has become, has demonstrated this whole moderate focus for the last two elections by electing Rouhani, right? They must, they're saying to themselves, the people in Iran are saying to themselves, this Trump guy is crazy. We have demonstrated um, in negotiating with Obama. We have demonstrated that we want to have a more moderate government. And then you go on the world stage and you cause friction between the two people, that, the two groups that are fighting, the Sunni and the Shiites. Are you kidding me? And so what, what Trump is doing, he's going back to the old model when we propped up these regimes, like in Egypt, right? Right? Like we propped up to these regimes in uh, uh, um, Libya. So what he's saying, forget all of your, your, the stuff that you're doing to your people. You forget all of that. We just want to do business with you. So if you're murdering people in your country, that's all right with us. If you're killing women in your country, that's all right with us. It's all about business, and it's all about my partners, business interests, and we're going to get that done. So he used Saudi Arabia as that stage. So I'm going to ask you again. You don't believe that the sanctions that currently exist um, uh, holding yes. Iran at bay uh, are a result of Iran's uh, consistent defiance um, and that uh, Iran does not pose a threat. Well, no, I'm not. I'm not saying that. Well, first of all, those sanctions. I mean, at this particular point, because of the agreement that they made on mm -hmm. nuclear disarmament, right. those sanctions are, are being lifted. Are lifted, right? Right. right. Well, what, but, what, but one of the big concerns is that as the money flows in there, and there are concerns all over. Uh, even even Obama had the concern that some of that money would find its way to terrorist groups. Well, the Saudis' money is doing the same thing. They're financing it. So, so here's the issue. You come in, you say you're not going to um, dictate. You're not going to tell mm -hmm. the Saudis or the Arab world what to do, right? right? But that's exactly what he did do. He told the Arab world, the Arab world, the mainstream Arab world, the Iranians are horrible. They're the devil. 
right? And there, it's just like when Bush, one, Bush two said the axis of evil, right? So he, he was no different. And you know when Bush said the axis of evil, what happened after that? So what is the Shiites going to do now? They're going to know, they're, that minority is going to realize that they're under attack. And now you're probably going to get a, a bigger explosion of terrorism than we had before. Interesting, right? Well, well I mean, well, well, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's it's a wait and see. Um, and uh, it's I, not. It's, I but but think about it. I mean, it was they just sold. They had the biggest arms sale, correct? Right. Three hundred billion, right? Right. Three hundred billion, right? And then um, Jared Kushner negotiated. It. I can, can somebody explain to me no. where did he get the ability to negotiate an arms? A uh, deal right. with Lockheed. I mean, that is crazy. Right. So, I mean, I I think that this guy has no be, experience. I think that people should be irate about that. Um, you know, but I I, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm I'm looking at the deal. I'm I'm listening to it. Hey. Uh, when we said we were going to talk about it today, I told you that um, you know I was caught up with some things this weekend and didn't get to really check out the the news cycle or. Uh, to you know, to check out the deal in, in its entirety, um, but uh, you know, what I will say is, is you know I, I I am not I, I think that right now Iran still needs to be dealt with that they need to be dealt with and and I don't think that uh, the way that Obama uh, dealt with them was effective. Well, Obama had one task. What was the biggest task of Obama? Obama's oh. task was to disarm to dis right. their nuclear nu weapons. Nuclear disarmament. He Correct. accomplished that. Then what Obama did, he set the tone for um, Rouhani to be elected, which was a moderate president. He just got elected twice. Now there's a bigger issue for Iran. The clerics, right, who actually are the driving force behind Iran, that the Iranian cleric, um, his name escapes me, he's going to be leaving soon. So you're going to have this 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 fight in Iran with the moderates, right, and the crazy people, right, the clerics, right, right. So now, what 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 through through what Obama was doing was because of the economic sanctions and those economic sanctions being taken away, taken off the table, Iran is starting to evolve. The culture, the the people in the in the country are saying, listen, we don't want to be engaged in war. We want to be engaged in making money. We want our economy to grow. Right. So because of Obama's policy on Iran, that's why Rouhani was elected to, again, right. which is a great thing. What does Trump go and does on the, on the heels of his victory? Right? He says that Iran is a part of the axis of evil, when in fact Saudi Arabia is. Saudi Arabia is no different than Iran. That only thing that's different is that Trump is doing business with uh, um, the American government presently is doing business with the Saudis. But the Saudis have been financing terrorism for years. So now when well, you, but, so you can only judge, so, so now in the but, we, but we all have been financing terrorism. No, 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 wait a minute. No, no, but we yeah. all have been. Wait a minute, I'm, not, I'm we're talking about two different things now. We're talking about Trump's visit to Saudi Arabia. No, no, we are. The arms deal with Saudi Arabia. Right, but, but, but I his, guess what, his, I'm, what I'm getting his speech, at is. His speech, to me, was horrible. I mean, I mean, this guy is so uncomfortable with talking about anything serious that it scares me. It looks like he's going to the bathroom every time he's talking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the guy is so uncomfortable because he's living a lie, like at a whole nother level. But on the day of his speech, the Iranians proved to the world that they're moving into the future. He wants to drag them back into the past because it benefits him and it benefits his business partners. No president in the world should have created a wedge between the Arab, Arab nations when, in fact, he said that he wasn't. He was trying to unify them. So what he did was he had everybody, and, jo and the Jordan, um, king of Jordan, Hussein, what's his name, Hussein? Hussein mm -hmm. He was right. there. Now, he is a proxy of the American government. He gets paid zillions of dollars to house Palestinians in his country, right? So he, up to me, he lost his credibility. He was always the unifier like his father was, right? So now he's there, and then the Egyptian president, the, the former general, was there saying, oh, we're going to all work together with Saudi Arabia, but we're going to put a, a, a red flag on Iran. So what do you think that's going to, how do you think that's going to work? It doesn't work. It never has worked. But, we, but when I, you know, what is, so, so here, here's what, I, what I'm considering, right? One of the statistics that I was looking at was that, you know, out of Saudi Arabia or, you know, uh, out of Sunni 
you know, uh, nations, 90% of Muslims across the globe identify Sunni. So when you're talking about a 10%, right, 10% group of folk who identify Shia, and you say that you want to put them on the world stage, the question that I'm asking, it's only a question, is they are marginalized by virtue of the fact that their belief system isn't a predominant or dominant belief system. Did you, I mean, does that logic not make sense? No, it doesn't. Okay, explain to me why. Well, well so we're you got you got ten percent well, of people. We're people. We're people of color, right? But you got ten percent of people. Uh, we're African American. But, 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 but I'm saying when you're talking about the when you talk about the Muslim, you know, or middle uh, middle Eastern region, right? And you and you have an ideology that is held by ten percent of the people, and and and, th and those ten percent of people would love nothing more than but to have those ninety percent of people. Uh, 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 move over and and adopt that ideology. But why do they, why do they have to? What? No, that's what I'm saying. But 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 I'm saying Iran would love nothing more than to have the Muslim nations move over and adopt a Shia ideology. Well, I mean, we, I, I, I get that might be correct, right? But but the, the world the, the world that they live in uh, is a very fractured world. So let me give an example. But, but that's what because because of the, not only fractured but it's volatile because of uh, because of the uh, America's foreign policy. I mean, who I believe is definitely responsible for destabilizing uh, um, the Arab the Arab nations, the Arab rim coming out of Bush one and Bush two. Um, you know, there's no return. All of the strong men that were financed over the last several decades, you know, for some apparent reason, this American government who's used them as proxies for years moved them off the scene in chaos. Chaos followed right behind that, right? But the real issue that's happening in these countries, there's a big, you're talking about the 1% here in this mm -hmm. country. The thing that's happening in those countries is the, the, the disparity between who has wealth and who doesn't have wealth, right? The disparity who has control over human rights and who doesn't have control over human rights is glaring. So the young people in those countries don't see hope. Good see, I don't believe I don't believe well, the, um, the the Egyptian, you know, um, upheaval and the Liberian uh, Liberia upheaval and and Tunisia upheaval was all about democracy. It was about being hungry. It was about opportunity. I agree. I agree with and that. we sold it in this country as democracy, and it's not. That's not democracy. They were hungry. They, were, they had the highest form of unemployment. They had no opportunity. They was on a cycle to nowhere. So it allowed these clerics, these radical clerics, because we have radical clerics here. We got radical leaders here. They just can't get away with it because our communities are so diverse, right? Right. But what that did, what that did is that that gave those clerics the opportunity to distort Islam, right, and put it in a negative space so they can uh, go out and fulfill these negative deeds against people that might not even understand what Islam is. So at the end of the day, we are responsible for the, 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 the destruction that's occurring in these Arab nations. Look, in Iraq, no sewage systems, no roads. Um, Syria, destroyed, proxy between the American government and Russia, right? Who's going to prop up Assad? But guess what? They're saying that propping up Assad is wrong, but they're propping up Saudi Arabia, which is wrong. Which is wrong. Well, but the human rights record is deplorable. Right, but well, right, but wait a minute though. So everybody's um, uh, propping up some proxy. Everybody, but is. then, then, but but no proxy gets three hundred three three hundred billion dollars worth of um, <laughs> weapons, and then they create this this um, terrorist center, which is going to operate against Iran. So what does Iran do? What are they supposed to do? They're going to go and they're going to create relationships with Germany. They're going to create relationships with France. They, they're going to backdoor them. So you're going to have France and you're going to have uh, Germany have a relationship with Iran because what they did with the Saudis just uh, the other day is going to block them out from having a, a bigger negotiation with the Saudi, Saudi Arabians. Saudi Arabia. Well, we shall see. All right. I'm just telling you. I mean, I'm only just giving no, you no, some no, of what's no. on my brain about. I know. I, mean, I, got, I got it. But, but so I we're going gonna, to gonna keep track on it. And, and we, we got to, man. We, we got to keep track to. on it. We have to. I mean, the country just elected for the second time a moderate president 
Which and I thought was a good thing. I thought it was great. But didn't you, don't you think that his tenor should have changed when he was giving the speech to the Saudis? Well, <laughs> I, I... He had Tillerson there, you know, former uh, Exxon um, CEO. You know, he had, I mean, they were all there cutting their deal. So let me ask and you And then the young guy, so, so Jared, Jared. So then I want to ask you a so question. Jared ask question. What, he went what, from real estate to selling arms. So what should he have, <laughs> so what should he have done? What, what he should have done? Yep. He should have talked about unifying the Arab nations, right? Bringing well, he, them closer. But, but he did talk no, about unifying. No, 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 he did not. Yeah, no, no. he did talk he, about unifying. No, he, he, he said, he said, this is what he said now. He said, we should all work together, we should do that, but those right, guys over right. there we should destroy. <laughs> right. You well, call them the axes of evil. So the question becomes, well... So, so he, that's not uniform. Well, but, but, he, but here's the... His but, speech was crazy. But, he, but here's the question, right? If, if, if his belief is that Iran stands in the way of a unified Middle East, right? That, that they need to be marginalized, they need to be dealt with, so that they can move forward with unifying the Middle East. All that was was a transaction. That's that's no, all that. No, it may that was a, the jo Jordanians got what they needed. Egypt got what and they I, needed. And, I, and, I and don't Saudi disagree Arabia with that. got what they needed, right? And what they're saying to everyone, I'm going to give you all of these weapons. I'm going to give you everything you need. And point them at Iran. Point, point them at Iran, <laughs> which is stupid. I mean, Iran can say, okay, well, you know what? If, I, I appreciate that, but we're going to get, we're going to go and cut a deal with Germany. We're going to cut a deal with what, what it is. We are a moderate country. Everybody's going to want to open up their channels for economic reform to them, and everybody's going to make money. So you're going to have the Saudis over here doing the same thing, the Sunnis, and then the Shiites doing the same thing. So it's never going to change. The people in the middle, the poor people in the middle, right? that are being abused, right? Yeah. The poor people in the middle that don't have jobs, nothing will change. And then this guy gets up there. I swear, every time, did you see how he gave the speech? I swear, I, I thought did. he was going to the bathroom. I did. He well, was tough for that guy. Yeah. Because he knows, I don't believe he reads well, anything. Well, no, no. I he, don't believe no, he no, Well, he was reading that off of a teleprompter. Yeah, but I don't even think, even but when I he was reading off the that, teleprompter. But I think that, like, he doesn't He doesn't believe know, it. He doesn't. You know well, what I mean? So he's stupid. reading it, yeah. and it's like, you, you know, like he's being force-fed you know what it is that he's reading so he would love to not read I it. mean he gets on the plane it's like he's so uncomfortable then his wife you know it's kind of it's kind of like what is that movie Stafford Strat Stafford Wives remember that movie? Yeah the Stafford Wives. That, that whole family is weird I mean and then you would see them in Israel they didn't wear um um the wraps and, and wait they didn't wear the wraps and mm -hmm. um in well, Saudi Arabia, Arabia pops, right? but, so, but that's okay because remember when um uh, Michelle didn't do it they beat her to death they Right? No one's saying anything about uh, about these two crazy people, right? So now, um, they go to Egypt, or I mean, they go to Israel, mm -hmm. and what do you see on um, Ivanka's hair? Nothing. No, 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 she does. Oh, she, has her she? she has her orthodox, the, I guess the... Oh, oh I'm sorry, in Israel. Right. That's right. That's right. 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 So I'm like, come on, give me a break. You know, I'm sorry. So you got, you got to be, a, you got to observe, observe this stuff. So wait a minute, where was it? Because I wrote it down. Um, so... Israel. Uh, Rehab, uh, Jerusalem, and the Vatican. Yeah. Now he said. Right, now, right. and when he comes back home, he's going to tweet. We got to keep Muslims out. You know, he's going to come back to that because he's got to pay to his radical extremist racist base. So when he comes back to America, he's going to tweet out. You know, dealt with those Arabs. You know, we're going to yeah, we're going to keep them out of our country. And then his his rabid base is that who doesn't read do you, is going to accept that. Do you think? Do you think so? Yeah, they don't read. I'm sorry. The America they I mean, want, the America they want, but, never they, but they didn't have to read. It was all on the news. Listen, that he man, was there, listen, if that he not, was shaking if hands, if not dancing. Fox, not they, dude, he was dancing listen, with them. Listen, man, listen. I, listen, they did um, a small... I mean, how does he come back and throw a, red meat at them when, you know, I mean, the big new, news was that because, he bowed down mentally, to, oh, to, on, have on, a, to have on, a to have a necklace put on his neck. So, so. He's mentally ill. The guy's going to come back here in the next couple of weeks. He's going to tweet out something against the Muslim community. Without fail, because he's he's still pursuing the ban. Well, but he's uh, still pursuing the ban. Right. Well, he says it's not a ban. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got, he, that's what I, I got mean, you. I, he's if he I'm was in here, he would say to you, he said it's not a ban. If he was, he's saying here, to you that he's saying to the American people, this is what he's saying. Though. If he he's was saying to the here, American we people, we would have to get a therapist to sit in the meeting with. We us. would, and that would cause the man is crazy. Yeah. I mean, you know, when he was talking, I mean, we're not here to dictate to you. I mean, but that's what he was doing. Because he said to them, you have to turn your backs on Iran. That's, a dic that, that's what he was dictating. I don't, I don't think it's going to work. I think his foreign policy is schizophrenic. 
Uh, first of all, I don't, even, I don't even think he even understands what foreign policy is. Mm. Well, I know. I agree with you there. I mean, you, I mean, you don't have to agree with me. I don't think he understands what it is. I don't think what he, I don't believe he thinks what comes out of his mouth has an impact on the market, has an impact on no, our, no. our national. He, he knows that. He knows that. Okay. Remember early on where he made a statement about uh, canceling a, a, a contract with um, you know, with the airline uh, manufacturer <laughs> yeah. and their stock dropped a billion dollars? Some, yeah, like that. yeah, but guess what? No jobs ever came back. I mean, yeah, no jobs are not coming back. Listen, I saw uh, one of the reporters on Channel 2, Channel 4 was in a diner. Because I always believe if you really want to know what's going on in your city or, or what's going on in your state or your country, just go to a diner in, in certain parts of the state and ask the question about, like, what... Do you, do you know what pay to play is? No, I don't know what pay to play is. Um, do you believe in um, your leadership? No, they're all bombs, right? right? But this was a question. They were asking him about Trump and what, if Trump was doing a good job. Now, everybody that's sensible knows that Trump's not doing a good job. Well, some of them, I can't call them what I really want to call uh -oh. them on the air, but they actually defended his behavior. So that tells me that these people are completely ignorant to what's happening in the world or they just cold-blooded and different, and they just want the America that they were comfortable with, right? And that America, that America was to prop up their their illusion of white privilege, right? And prop up the illusion that the, so what do the you people say of to, color. But what do you say to intellectual blacks who um, who watch and listen to what's going on, and they're in agreement? Who are intellectual blacks that are watching what's going on? Well, I, I just, uh, I just believe. <laughs> I just believe. <laughs> yeah, I just believe. I think you're fall off your <laughs> I just believe, first of all, I will not put them in an intellectual um, category. Okay. But I believe that there's certain people. Everybody has the right to their own point of view. Mm -hmm. But I just believe there's some people in life that just want to be contrary. You know, really? contrary. I just I, sometimes you ever talk to people, people like you really can't possibly believe that. So I give the contrary people the opportunity to do and say what they want to say, but only time will tell. So we had 125 days, 130 days. Well, if anybody's promoting anything that demonstrates that um, Trump is genius or Trump is a, a very clever and smart and there's something behind what he's doing, well, they're either contrary or completely insane. And I keep trying to tell you, we need to get therapists in here to talk about those kind of people. I mean, that's weird. I mean, Trump is destroying what the presidency represents in this country and in the world. Because no one, I bet you in Germany, I bet you in France, I bet you in other parts of the world, they're, they're laughing at us that we elected that guy to lead the free world after Obama. I mean, you got to be kidding me. And his job, and Trump's job thus far, I've never seen a president do this. I didn't see Bush 1 do it. When Clinton won, I didn't see Clinton do it. When Clinton moved on, I didn't see Bush Jr. do it. And I didn't see Obama's doing. This guy can't make a decision without talking about Obama. Obama brings um, health care right, to us, right? First time in the world we have health care. Families are going to have health care to help their children with pre-existing conditions. Now, Trump does, while he's away, he's putting an executive order, if I'm not mistaken, to change Medicaid, Medicare. The man's evil. He's evil. His party is evil. And anybody African-American selling that nonsense... They are crazy. They're beyond even. <laughs> so listen, when we come back from the break, what I want to do, we're, we're going to, I want to finish up with the Trump thing, uh, talk about whether or not. I can talk, I can talk about that guy all day. Well, whether or not uh, him going away eased the pressure. Oh, right? It's only getting worse. Whether, whether it eased the pressure, um, what's going to happen with this, um, uh, 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 what do you call him, a um, independent investigation. Uh, whether or not he should be impeached. We're going to move on with that. And then uh, if we can't get the phone line working to get a call in, we'll call out to them later. Okay, great. And then, no and then we'll, we'll have that conversation Good. and find we'll out that. what she's doing. Yeah, I'll look, and, I, want, um, I want her on this show. we got to figure Yeah, no, no, we're, we're going to figure that out. Um, okay, when we take the break, I'll talk to OB, see if we got this working. If not, then um, okay. then we'll do it. We'll be right back. Slash Radio 94.3. Bring it. Dance hall, soca, hip hop and R and B, African, disco, oldies but goodies. Hi, this is Jenna Jackson. We're bridging the gap. Seriously, Splash Radio ninety four point three, New Jersey. Yes, the thing is, the first thing is 
that you just didn't come back downstairs and it's Tell me something to look at. Hi, this is Miss Woman Moving. Box truck for rent for all your life moving needs. And you have to get a door to your storage, Irvin's Pink Orange area. $50 a trip from Monday to Thursday. $60 from Friday to Sunday. Call 862. Two seven nine nine three zero zero. Yeah, but I, you know, that's when I get a gubernatorial candidate. Two seven nine. I've been trying to get on zero zero for a month, and he could, says he's gonna call in. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's that's a killer. What I am doing? Downloading the Western Union app. I need to send money to my auntie in Nigeria. Know what I am doing now? Checking today's exchange rate to Nigeria on the Western Union app. Now, I'm sending my auntie money to help her with her groceries. Download the Western Union app today. Use it to check today's exchange rate and send money to loved ones in Nigeria. Western Union, moving money for better. Western Union makes money from currency exchange. Carefully compare fees and exchange rates, which may vary and are subject to change. NMLS number 906983. For the most authentic Caribbean food in town, check out Sunsplash Caribbean Bakery and Restaurant. They got the natural organic juice bar that'll get your day started right. Like the Power Punch, the Big Juice, the Mega Green, Roots like the Immortal and the Resurrection. And peep this, they have an extended bakery department that whips up my favorite, the Hot Hardo Bread. White or wheat, that's your choice. If you're feeling hungry, just grab a bite. Sunsplash Caribbean Food Trite. Jamaican party, I tell our veggies. And since the flag created for the right, mix the dean up with the carmel parties. Serving breakfast, wow. lunch, and dinner, they also cater to vegans and vegetarians. With the Ital stew and the Ital ox, the sole jerk salmon and mango tilapia. And of course, they got the usual curry goat, oxtail, brown stew chicken, jerk chicken, and so much out, more. Huh? I mean, their menu is extended and they're highly rated. Your best bet is to just stop by or give them a call. They're open Monday through Wednesday, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Thursday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. And Sundays, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. They're located at 56 Main Street in Orange, New Jersey and can be reached at 973-395-377. If they are no hungry days, when it's all oh, yeah, food up and we have to neglect. Long time we day are how we sit on a wet. Sun splash restaurant are run the place. Everybody be said just want a taste, yeah. Let your food be a medicine. Eat well, live longer. I'm David Shepard and I endorse this commercial. Yo, this is Splash Radio at the number one radio station in New Jersey. I want them. Well, I don't know, Mr. G represent for 94.3 FM Splash Radio. We'll just splash out the music on them. You're no, listening to the Eric Dawson Radio Show on 94.3 FM. So it appears that we still have uh, telephone issues. We can't even call out. Yep. So um, Obi Wan's gonna have to. Uh, it's a technical issue. Yeah, he's gonna have to take his lightsaber, man, and work some magic. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know. Well, what he probably should do is get another phone in here too. You should put another phone. Yeah. So you can have a backup. Yeah. So we, we we're gonna have to figure that out. Um, but um, so uh, the teaser before the break was whether or not any of what's been going on uh, has eased the pressure. Uh, and the call for, and is it a premature call for impeachment? Well, listen, impeachment takes a long time. They have a special uh, uh, prosecutor now. That's going to take a long time. Remember when Clinton it took about three to four years. That's going to take a long time. Um, I think that M M Mueller, who's, who was the former FBI director, well respected. is going to do a really good job. Mm -hmm. I think Comey is going to blow up this um, administration. But here, here, here's the question I want to... I think Comey's going to blow it up. But it's here's just going to blow it up. But, it, it, but, but he, here is the thing, and this is what I do know about investigations, right? Once you start, it's like a Pandora's box. Absolutely. It opens, and then there, like an onion, it's layers and layers and layers, and you have no idea what's well, going Well, look, look at what this president did. But here's what I want to ask. Yeah. Comey, who says, and, and people around him say, that he, it is his nature to do these memos he every, every meeting. He did it on uh, the, 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 the Bush, Bush 2. So now... He did, did it, he did it to, during Bush 2. When Ashcroft was in the hospital, he kept copious notes about what was going on when they were trying to get him... But once you open up this Pandora's box of memos and copious notes, what notes and memos are off limits? What do you mean off limits? Well, you mean, I mean, you can't. You're not going to just ask when they when they go to subpoena. 
look, I'm going to tell you, if I were a, um, if I were, a, a, you know, a prosecutor, I would say, listen, not only do I want the, uh, the notes that you took here, I want to understand what kind of notes you take because I want to I want to be clear that you weren't just taking notes to torpedo this particular president. So this I want to see this guy is brilliant. Whatever notes he wrote, right? If they were favorable or not favorable, they're going to subpoena them and he's going to turn them over. But here's the here's not, this, this is how bad this is. The young lady Yates, right? All right. Right before she started to question Flynn um, and then brought it to the president that Flynn was a, an issue for his administration and that he was under FBI investigation. 24 hours later, she was fine. Yates. Okay, Yates. Dynamic, brilliant prosecutor. Been in the Justice Department for 20 some odd years. I mean, she went before the Congress and just nailed it. Uh, and she was fine. Three weeks later, four weeks later, Comey, one of, if not one of the most respected men in his field, that's basically a company man too for 26, 20 some odd years. He well, wait, wait, stop before you say he was respected. But I'm just saying, irregardless of the Hillary Clinton, uh, irregardless because, of that, Because all Democrats were but, calling for him yeah, to be fired. Yeah, but guess what? And he was wrong for that. But what I'm saying to you was they can't disqualify the fact that he's not one of the best at what he does. Right? Can't disqualify that. I thought he was wrong I mean, right. for what he did um, um, with Hillary Clinton's um, email, with the email debacle. But I blame Hillary Clinton for that, too. I blame, you got to read this book, Shattered, that I'm reading. Mm -hmm. And it talked about how that evolved and why she had that server. And it, it will blow your mind, I mean, uh, uh, for the reason she did it. Now, if I was her in those circumstances, knowing what I, knowing what I know now, and I would have never had a private server, but knowing what she's gone through and knowing what she's, she's seen happen when you, your information is free-flowing through the system, you know, could have been a problem. So i got to tell you, she's to blame for that. She opened herself to that. She did not mm -hmm. handle that well. And reading this book, I could see that, you know, she went right back into defense mode like she, she has to do and she's prepared to do and because of the things that have happened to her. And it impacted her all through the election. So we could talk about that. i got to get you this book. As a matter of fact, I'm going to buy this book for you, Shadow, because you should read it. But Comey is going to come before the, the Congress, right? He's coming mm -hmm. before the Congress. Right. And he's going to talk about those discussions. He's going to talk about it. And he's going to blow the lid off of this administration. Right after that, he fires Comey. But on the day before he fires Comey, he has a Russian spy, right, and a Russian diplomat in his office. And... He called Bush, I mean, um, Trump called, I mean, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Putin called Trump to ask Trump to have that meeting. None of those guys were in the region when, or well, one was in Alaska and one was someplace else. Mm -hmm. So that meeting was set up by Trump. So he let a Russian spy in his office right. <laughs> that was a part of the investigation that's going on now for Russian, Russians interfering in our election. So what does that tell you? This well, guy's crazy. But, well, but people said that there was nothing uh, wrong with that. That's what he said. Well, I don't know what people you're talking about. You're they, talking no. about him or his people? No, no, no. Oh, but then he goes and he tells, he goes uh, 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 on, on Channel 4 and he gets interviewed by Holt and he tells Holt, oh, I was going to fire him anyway. And then his deputy comes back, who's leading it now because his, um, um, the, the, um, his DOJ leader, um, Sessions, right. right? He can't, <laughs> listen, he had to recuse, he recuse himself because himself. Right. he's a part of the conspiracy. So this administration in 120 days has demonstrated to me that they don't have the capacity to do anything. What we should be praying for is that they become slightly normal but before wait, they get but, 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 Okay, so now, and not that I'm a Trump fan. I know you're not a Trump fan. Right. You, you but, 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 but he's I not here. Who's the, oh, Trump. Trump's not here. Trump's not here. <laughs> So, so, so I'm just crazy, crazy, man. <laughs> was like, so, so, so what, what, what Trump said was that he wanted to forge relationships with Putin. He, he made no bones about the fact that he admired Putin. Putin during the whole election. But during the entire election, right? Because everybody, remember the bromance uh, uh, skits on Saturday Night Live, all that. So everybody was clear. And then Donald Trump said himself, he said, I would hope that we could forge great relationships with Russia. And so now, if he is in fact just moving in those, so here's the issue. The issue isn't whether or not 
uh, 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 Russia uh, interfered with the elections. I think everybody is on board with that now. The question is whether there was collusion. That's the question. Not that they interfered. And Donald Trump is saying, if he were here, I'm sure he'd agree. He's saying, look, I want to get to the bottom of it. If they did interfere, we need to figure out how they got in and we need to resolve it. And we may need to even punish them for their interference. Having said that, I had nothing to do with them. I didn't communicate with them about it. There was no collusion about it. If they interfere, we need to deal with it. However, the art of the deal is we still need to try to figure out Man. paths to yeah. make things work. You and know. so inviting them in, having conversations with them, keeping doors of communication open are still necessary. That that I'm, I'm telling you, I mean, that's what the administration would. I, you know what? I could probably you take spices place, can't, right? You can't, I could probably take you spices can't possibly place. think what you just said made any sense to me. Listen, listen, listen to this. No, question. no. But we he, don't know that there was he collusion. Thwarted, he he obstruction of justice. He fired Yates. He fired Comey. Wait a minute. He fired Yates. He fired Comey. Right. But he said, but, he, but his he, reasoning he for firing Yates, his reasoning for firing Yates, had to do with the look. He I know his break. reason was no. for firing no. Yates. Here, well, but look at what we have now. And this is the truth, right? Um, and I'm dead serious about this piece. There is, I wouldn't even call it a leak anymore. Mm -hmm. It's a monsoon coming out of the White House in terms of information. And so one of the things in terms of securing... So what does that tell you? Well, but it, it, what it tells me is that... The, oh, no. Yeah, push that, push that button. Let's see what we got. Hello, caller. Hello, caller. Oh, that may just be uh, OB testing, testing the line. Okay. All right. We'll hang that up. Okay. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna uh, we're gonna finish this and then we're gonna get on the on the call because then I want to finish that call and then uh, so yeah you want to uh, tell her to call in yeah tell her to call in. That's good. But one of the things that I want to uh, to to stress to people is this: <laughs> you need to be able to have conversations without fear of massive leaks I wouldn't doubt that in every administration there are things that are spoken in meetings that if we heard them we would be uncomfortable with them but those things need to be talked about in order to get to listen Obama whatever. did not have a conversation in his White House and hold on. Yep, let's see hello caller Hello. Hey, this is Layla. Hey, Layla. Oh, How you doing? okay. Sorry so, for the delay. So, Layla, we're we're gonna interrupt it. We're gonna get back to this, though, Kev. <laughs> okay. We're, no we're problem. gonna get back to to, <laughs> to these leaks or this monsoon that's coming out of <laughs> out of out of um, out of the White House. But um, but let's let's move. Well, Layla, to the I know I told you to call in at ten thirty. We had a technical issue here, and you know, live a live radio, anything could happen. But you know, we do a segment every week called "Tell Us What You're Doing," mm -hmm. and you know, we had the Lacey Davis on several weeks. We had Anthony Smith from Lincoln Park on. And we thought it would be important to find a dynamic young lady, a, a young woman. And I know you have a partner that's just as dynamic as you. And we wanted to showcase what you were doing in the community and some of the issues you might be having, um, expanding your program, tell us all the success of your program, how many kids you're reaching. And um, Layla Little is a Newarker. I, I'm going to ask her that question. I ask her where she lives at. But she's really, truly committed to Newark and really, truly committed to her community. And she's one of the most dynamic young ladies I've met. Um, and she puts her butt on the line every day to save our young ladies and, and, and create a positive, and, be, and is a positive force in their lives. And she works with parents and um, uh, government to try to get the quality things that she needs to act as a positive protective factor for those mm -hmm. kids. So, Layla, tell us what you're doing. Wow. That intro, I didn't know you were talking about me. Oh, you. yeah. I love you, kid. <laughs> well, again, he said it a million times. My name is Layla Little, and um, my partner and I started a double Dutch organization 11 years ago. And a lot of people ask where did it start from, but we started jumping double Dutch at the Boys and Girls Club back in, oh, when we were five and seven years old. So because it saved our lives, I'm going to say saved because had it not been for the double Dutch program at the Boys and Girls Club, who knows what type of trouble or where we would have been. So yeah, it saved our lives. And because of that, we decided to branch off the Boys and Girls Club and start our own organization. So fast forward 11 years, um, the name of the company is Floyd Little Double Dutch Inc. We have two organizations now, one a Double Dutch uh, International Double Dutch League, and we have our own private team here in Newark. 
And a lot of people say that we just do double dutch. But no, we use double dutch to empower the youth in the city and now throughout the, the world, literally. We have um, other teams uh, that are members under our league from as far as Morocco to Guyana to um, now West Africa, Ghana specifically, who all come become who all come together and use double dutch to empower the youth. Um, like Uncle Kevin say, I call Uncle Kevin. We <laughs> speak to politicians. We go to um, other leaders in the community and outside of the community, assemblymen, to get support and resources for these youth. Because like any other sport, it costs money to participate. From uniforms to tournament fees to traveling expenses, you name it. We and we're working with urban communities, so a lot of the parents don't have the funds to sponsor it. So we work with people like Kevin and, and Councilwoman Cheney Phil, and we try to go to the, um, the mayor's office, to you name it, whoever has the funds to, to have to make sure these kids get the experience. We work with them, um, and I mean these kids have gone all over the world doing what they love, double dutch. Well, tell us about your tell us about your um your, your TV show you were on. I was just about to get into that. Okay. So our girls, we are the face of double dutch now throughout the world. Um, people flying from Guyana, from Africa to get trains by my partner and I. Why? Because we have our own TV show on Lifetime called Jump. And that show chronicles how myself and my partner um, have decided to use Double Dutch to empower the youth. And every week when that show, from the first week it aired, the, the team from North has beat everybody in the world, literally. From teams from Japan to Germany to North Carolina, South Carolina, California. Everybody was on that floor every Saturday trying to beat this team from North. And wow. unfortunately, we are the world champions with no practice space. No and practice we're, space. We're, None. we're literally like we're homeless. Homeless. So we go from place to place every year trying to find a space. I mean, how does that, wait, 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 wait. So mm -hmm. I don't understand something. So how does that happen? So you have yeah. these relationships with um, these politicians that you just talked about. Um, you talked about empowering the youth through Double Dutch. Um, how have you not been able to, or why haven't you been able to leverage uh, the celebrity, the success, right, the passion, uh, and the engagement from the community uh, to be able to get folks to, to help you with the space? You know, this is a conversation that my partner and I have every day to ourselves, to other people. And honestly, we don't know why, because I think part of the reason why they just see it as a pastime is just double dutch. Um, it's not boxing, it's not football, it's not basketball, we're working with girls. So they don't see it as something that we need our own space. Well, let me, um, let me just, let's, let me just. not look at as yeah. important, as something important, I think. How much, and how, how I much money? I can't really give you a direct answer. How much money have you spent of personally of your own money? over the last couple of years. Just give me an approximate uh, a number. Two, are, aren't you a single mother? Aren't you a single mother? I'm a single mom. My partner's a single mom of two. Of two, great. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And you live and in, where, where do you live at in North? I live in the West Ward. You I live in the West Ward. In the Ivy, Ivy Hill community. Oh, Ivy Hill community. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. and, and how much money do you, have you, you, you believe you spent over the last decade? Well over well over a hundred thousand. Well over a hundred thousand. And these but are out of your own pocket. pocket. Right. These are two young ladies. Out of my own pocket. So do you out not get in do you, do you get do you have sponsors? Do you get investors? Do you Well you know, we get Gail has given given um money to the Devil Dutch program mm -hmm. and I'm quite sure other people have given um, money to the Devil Dutch program. I can't speak for everyone. But all all I, from this is what I believe is happening. You know, to be an independent thinker like these two young ladies mm -hmm. are, to be a leader, to be in leadership positions like these young ladies are, because that's what they do. They train young women to be leaders, right? And the Double Dutch program enhances their leadership um, skill development. It empowers them as young women. It gives them the opportunity to, to, to understand themselves and what their place in the world is, right? And I think what's happened because of these young ladies' independence, they've been used as a political football. Okay. Wait, there's no way in hell that these two young ladies should not have a place to take kids off the street. That's non-political. That's non-political. So, oh, stop. Let me ask you a question. Right. And I, I, I really want... 
So now, can I finish? Go ahead. Because that's, that's, non, getting... that's non-political. And what's happening is because these young ladies don't want to play ball. Now, let me just tell you how insidious it is. Essex County College has a gym they don't use all the time. The Boys and Girls Club have a gym they don't use all the time. Um, uh, Nork, the city of Newark has recreation. The centers as a whole. They don't. What are those? Well, I don't know what those are. But but the, the I remember sense. I told you I told you the centers of hope. Don't don't get me started. But I'm that. saying it's space. But, he, but here's the issue. But here's the issue. So you know she doesn't. I want her to stay in a more professional space and explaining how effective her program. No, is I, I get it. it. So I don't want her in that space. But I'm going to take the space that I don't want her in. No, I get I it. I mean, uh, political retaliation is against these two women because of several things. I, I would imagine. She, they're not sleeping with someone. They're not going to betray their relationship, long-term relationships with other people based on how you feel about another uh, elected official. And I gotta give, I gotta give them credit. And I'm giving them credit because they've been under a lot of stress for the last couple of years because of this. They have stood firm. So they are not only are they teaching their girls to stand firm and be positive and be be uh, women of their community and future leaders. They're doing the same thing. How old are you, Layla? How old are you? 33. 33. Two dynamic women that are empowering young women. And guess what? I know that Gail has worked with them, and I know Gail is continuing to work with them, and I know there are other people working with them. But they're under duress right now. And they're under duress because the body politic, right, the mayor's office, the recreation department, they don't understand why they're supposed to give them everything that they need to keep doing the work that they're doing. And that should not be political. Right. Saving a child's life is not political. You can build a stage on Broad Street that's talking about stopping crime and it's 45 murders that day, but you can't give a couple of extra days of help to this organization that's right. empowering young ladies. Right. Come on now. And you know what they're going to say? Oh, we give her money. We talk to her. Guess what? If that was the case, I would not know what I know about it. Right. No, no. Right. So, come um, on, folks. Right. Come on. Well, 33 years old, $100,000. National champion all over the world. All over the world. TV show. I mean, promoting the success of these young women. Young women empowering other young women. And then you got leaders going all around here, you know, promoting bull crap. You know what I mean? Talking about they running a youth program. They running a death camp for youth. That's what they're running. Yeah. No. Um, Come on now. Right. So we, we we need to figure out how to fix this. Well, first of all, they need and a space. I mean. Not only are my girls doing phenomenal on the floor, but we have a 100% graduation rate, high school graduation rate, and we're working on our fourth year of college graduates. Come on. Every year our girls are coming out of high school or college. Um, every year. And now we have psychologists, and not only do we teach them to graduate and go into their careers, we ask them to come back to North and work in this community. We have a, a young lady who graduated from college two years ago, about to get her master's, who has her own nonprofit now of 300 kids, 300 cheerleaders. And what's that? And where's, what's the name of that? What's the name of that? Uh, CEA, um, Candy Elite Cheerleaders. Really? So you have, yes. your, your organization. Yes. Through, uh, under our tutelage, yes. Wow. Absolutely. Wow. And then now, we have a psychologist and a teacher. She's a psychologist and a teacher during the day. For all you black women and black men, for all you yes. black women and black women at home, black women and black men at home, you know, that talk about, you know, nothing's being done in the city of Newark. You know, this Tell Me What You're Doing segment was built just for that. So quality people can get on the air and talk about the things that they're doing to impact Newark positively. And they're not making declarations. You know, they're not standing on the stage reciting poetry. They're rolling up their sleeves and they're doing the work every day. And, you know, for them to be impacted because they don't agree with a political position, that, that, that's what they did in Nazi Germany. That's what they're doing in Venezuela. That's what they're doing in Russia. That's what they're doing in China. That's what they were doing in Cuba. So Newark has become, you know, <laughs> a, a country, a, a city that doesn't believe in true democracy and doesn't believe in having your independent voice. Their job is to suppress that. So I want everybody at home, right, to listen. This young lady needs our help. And Absolutely. I'm glad she came on the show. And then she's, she, you could tell she's very positive and very passionate. She's a Norker. No. I know her parents. No. I know her family. And this is a homegrown young lady. No. This is outside of politics. Well, but you know what, though? So, so I mean, I need to meet her character. Oh, we're gonna, well, right. first of all, I'm, I'm going to call the press because we, I, I just now think I'm going to call the press so we can do a story about it. Oh, no, this. no. But that's what I'm saying, right? So I think that there needs to be uh, enhanced public relations. Absolutely. Right? Um, uh, so, and it's unfortunate that you have to do this. But sometimes 
sometimes you have to make an they say the squeaky wheel is the one that gets the oil right, right. or most attention so yeah. we have to we have to you know increase the decibel level of your squeaking um and then and then uh and you, you know what they do? You know what they do to her every time she gets closer to getting something? Oh, something falls through. All of these intellectual misfits, right, that are running our institutions, they don't even understand the seriousness of it because they're all feeding off a system that they shouldn't be feeding off right. of. Right. So, but, but all of this, which is why we do this yeah, platform, absolutely. right, because we need to turn the spotlights on. See, because people act differently Absolutely. when the spotlight is on. Absolutely. And so we're going to now turn the spotlight on. Layla, I appreciate your call. I appreciate what you do. I am amazed um, at what's going on. But, but part of the public relations not only has to be you telling your story and your partner telling her story, but these young women who are coming through telling your their story. telling their story. See, because that is the story that that um, that folks are gonna that's gonna be compelling. Because when we're now when we're facing all of the issues that we're facing in urban America, right? And here you are problem solving. Absolutely. Right? right. Problem solving. People are saying, well, what's the solution? And you're saying you're not belly aching about it. You know, and in the 10 years that you've been getting your back kicked in by these folks who are running politics, you've not complained. You've continued to push forward. And like you said, you've, you've produced a 100% graduation rate. That's amazing. So I commend you for that. And we need to embarrass them. Absolutely. Not you. You keep doing what you do. Well, wait a minute. The Newark Public Schools, when we were reviewing their budget, it, they only had a million dollars of a billion dollar budget. Three point. What's the bu what's the budget for the public schools? One point. I think it's one point two billion. Yeah. And they only spend one million. They should be jumping all over wow. these young ladies. They should be giving those young ladies a hundred thousand dollars. But that's what I'm saying. So we, we no no. And right now, as we speak, there's three North Public School students who we're trying to get to the college tours last championship at Cornell, June 16th through 18th. And you, you know, they're trying to do that now. Yeah. Okay. So 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 listen. Okay. So you're trying to do that now. So right now, I am committed to partnering with you and leveraging every ounce of will that I have to try to make that happen. So um, I'm going to get your information uh, from Kevin uh, when we're off the air. You and I are going to connect in the next 48 hours, and then we're going to put together a plan of action to be able to apply the necessary pressure to make this happen. A billion dollars. This is ridiculous. A billion. Kev, this is... This but they just gave $40, $42 million to Four. a private building owner. Right. Huh? Really? Hmm. Seriously? Oh, let's call him up. Let's call that, that guy that got $42 million. Let's call him up. Layla, I love you. I appreciate it. And, um, and we're going to reach out for you. I'm going to have Eric call you, and then I'm going to I'm gonna do my thing. You know what I'm going to do. <laughs> so... I, 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 oh, we, we're going to we, get it and, done. And, and guess what? And tell um, all of the people on your team... That we really, uh, we really admire you, and we are. We I feel empowered that you're even in Newark doing what you're doing. Oh, I'm loving I'm quite this. sure you could go anywhere in the country and do what you're doing. And it's a shame They're that active for us. They're right. active for us every day. Oh, it's a shame. Homegrown talent is being held down by homegrown talent. I mean, it's a people masquerading as talent. Yeah. All no, right. We're gonna fix this. Yeah. Okay. Good. I'll Let's speak to you uh, shortly later. Thank you for calling in. Thank you. Appreciate you. All right. Bye. Bye. Radio show on 94.3 FM. Yeah, so listen, Kev, I had, um, um, <coughs> sorry guys, I can't mention the name of the person, but I spoke to somebody last week and I'm, I'm infuriated because, um, the person who I was on the phone with last week, who I met, um, and she told me, she said, Eric, you cannot mention who I am or allude to what it is that I do because she is so concerned about political retaliation. But she has not been able to advance in her career, she told me, because she has not been willing to exchange that advancement for uh, for sexual favors. Oh, I mean, but, but I mean, everybody in North, listen, everybody and then wait a minute, in but North we did a, we did, we did a show. to be true. But we did a show, Osman and I did a show on Real Talk Radio. And I got a ton of phone calls after that affirming or confirming what was said by Moses Singletary. Oh, Moses Singletary, oh, you got to listen to that no, episode, man. To Moses Singletary talked about, and, and it's true, I know it's true, talked about the fact that um, their naked pictures uh, of women who posed next to the big city seal in City Hall, right, 
that uh, uh, that uh, down by uh, what is it? The sanitation department. The couch down there. There's a couch, and you all know where it is. That there's sexual favors that are exchanged on that couch. What? what Dude, <laughs> I mean, this is a now. Yeah, I, mean, but I'm, I gotta get. I gotta. I'm, I'm telling tell you. I gotta get off right? this show. And so and so 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 the thing is this, guys. I can talk about it. Kevin can talk about it. Moses Singletary can post it on his page. Osmond can scream and yell about it. But at some point, you all have to get up off of your knees as voters, as residents in the city of Newark and say you deserve better. That people like Layla deserve the support of the leadership that you elect. That all of these people who are doing great things, and I've heard of a bunch of them who have nonprofits throughout the city of Newark, but because they won't kowtow to this administration, they're being strangled for resources. Listen, listen. I, I don't. I meanwhile, I meanwhile, can't. we're prepared, right, to blow up balloons, put flowers and candles at these sidewalk vigils. When you have real people who are doing real things, solving real problems to save lives. Well, I didn't know any of that stuff. You know that Moses Singletary and oh, dude! Dallas I mean, this is crazy. I mean, the culture well, is. Let just me just let me just tell you this. You know, I do want to come on the show one time in a, in a month or twice in a month and not have to talk about those things. I, I'm really fatigued. But you know what? Let me just say, it's difficult. Let me just, I know that, but I make that's my point. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I am not uh, of the opinion that I'm not. I'm not a shrinking violet, and you know, and, and I speak for myself. But I, you know, the level of criminality and, and, and the level of um, um, negative stuff that I'm hearing, it disturbs me because, you know, we all have invested in this town. We all love each other and we all have a lot of respect for each other, even if we don't agree with each other. There's some people I don't agree with. Look, shit, starting with you, excuse me, starting with you. We didn't agree with each other all the time, but we evolved as human beings and we're men and we understand that it's not necessary for us to agree as long as we can empower and create a high impact for our community, right? And I'm hearing this over and over again, but let me just tell you why it is true. This must be happening because if you heard it one time, I got you, but I hear it all the time. All the time. And, you know, and, you know, and I'm challenging women out there and fathers of daughters out there, right? to wake up. You know, we have to challenge them. So, give you an example. Last week there was a, a, a um, council meeting. I don't look at council meetings. I, I stopped looking at them a decade ago because it's difficult for me to look at Gail. I don't want to hear all that stuff because I basically hear it a long time before they, they get there. So I don't watch it. But I got a call and someone was telling me what happened at the last council meeting. And I was stunned by it. Um, three women got up there. Donna Jackson, Manira, um, and, um, oh my God, I'm, I'm having a, a mental breakdown, but um, got up there and actually spoke out against the administration. Now, these are the same people that prior to this administration getting elected was working with them in the community. Mm -hmm. Now, these people are, are, are Cassandra, Cassandra was, was one of them. These people got up before the council and said, listen, you know, Mayor, you're not doing your job. And some of you council people aren't doing your job. And you know what? Because one thing I give them credit for, they're equal opportunity butt kickers. You know what I mean? Everybody gets <laughs> their butt kicked. But, so that's why I respect them, right? I respect them. You don't have to agree with everything they say, but I respect them. But at the end of their um, them speaking, the chief of staff, Mitty Baraka, comes up with his bodyguards, because I call them bodyguards, not police officers. They're his private security on the backs of taxpayers, come up to the chamber and challenge them as women, as black women. Black women. Now, they're, they're women, though, now. See, now, if, if what these people were saying not, was not true, that would have never happened, correct? But then he went even further. I heard he was intoxicated. He went in even further and attacked a gay black sister, Manera. Right. And in the LGBT community, she'd be up in arms. I don't know how anybody can sit on that LGBT, yeah. wait a minute, the commission, and, 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 and sit there with any dignity when, in fact, he attacked this woman. Now, we just had a major discussion about, you know, sexual harassment. We had discussions about, you know, domestic violence. And, you know, all of us know what violence is. I am a, a son of violence. My father was murdered in this town. But I'm also a father of two daughters. Mm -hmm. And I'm a husband of a wife, right? Mm -hmm. and, a, and I'm a, a son of a, a mother, right? And, you know, domestic violence and threatening our women or, or intimidating our women 
and, and, and pushing up on our women, I don't understand why the LGBT commission, right, or the LGBT community is not up in arms but about you know what, though, that. Before, minute, though, before you finish, I want to tell you guys, just so you know, and then I want you to continue, Kevin. The reason I know that this is the mentality and the demeanor of Mitty Baraka is because during the campaign, he tormented my fiance and Sherrard Jeffrey's wife followed them as they were canvassing, S frightened her to the point that she called me and said, Eric, they just won't stop harassing us. I had to get in the car, man, and tell Mitty he lost his damn mind. Did, see, so this is the culture that, that, that folks have voted in, but you got to listen. You got and and I know and you know that they started off with you know, saying that me having these conversations and talking about that culture and talking about they strangled the, they tried to strangle the dude right they choked him out um, last year. What guy is that? Um, oh, what was his name? I'm gonna remember his name, but he had the anti-violence rally uh -huh. on the steps of City Hall, I don't remember. And, and and yeah, it was all in the paper. What well, is it? I guess either we are all battered women and battered men and it, uh, to allow this to continue to happen in our community because we're to blame. We're to blame for it. I mean, they're not to blame for it. I'm still perplexed why the chief of staff in the city of Newark has private security police officers that we've invested hundreds of thousands of dollars on taking him to go get his cleaning, driving him around. He's not the mayor. He's not the mayor. And the mayor... Get the, the executive privilege that the mayor gets exactly is that, a privilege. It's not by law. It's not by resolution. It's not by ordinance. So at the end of the day, they should be very sensitive about the fact that while everybody, well, people are being murdered and robbed on Martin Luther King Boulevard, they're the most protected family in America. Yeah. I mean, come on. That, I mean, he, they should be sensitive enough to not want to display that in public, knowing that is, that's a very sensitive issue. Now, come on, I'm not making this up. Are you making this up? This is not fake news. There was a council meeting last week. But what the thing that I found so interesting is he did it to black sisters. Yeah. He did it to black women. I mean, Donna Jackson has cursed me out on several occasions. Cassandra Doc, you know, she hit you upside the head, you know. Tim Four Evans. But these people are part of our community. Yeah. I, I remember back when I was in, in the business of government, our meetings used to last until 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, remember? <laughs> I mean, Dr. Walton, everybody, I mean, it was like active. But guess what? Those people were part of our family. We invited them to our events. We had lunch with them and dinner with them. You know, they would say, but Kevin, I, I think Gail should have done that. And I was like, Gail, this is what they're saying. You need to talk to them, right? So you have to open up to have conversations with them. But this is about this culture of suppression, this culture of sex for sale, this culture of intimidation, this culture of homophobic behavior, this, uh, this, 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 this whole culture uh, of... Um, um, suppressing women, um, you know, it's, it's just frightening to me, you know, and I got to tell you something, I'm a brother, right, I was born and raised in this town, nobody bet not ever open up their mouth and disrespect a woman in front of me, not any one of them, I could have never been there, but here's the problem, the police officers are really putting themselves in the trick bag, they're putting themselves in the trick bag, because these are citizens, yeah. so you acting as a bodyguard for this guy is putting you in jeopardy and putting the police department in jeopardy and putting the city in jeopardy and it's going to be opening us up to potential lawsuits because that's not their job. I mean, this is just bad. So the guy's name was Abdul Muhammad, oh, uh, okay. co-chair uh, co of the New Jersey Study Commission on Violence. Oh, okay. So he and his uh, partner, Salam Ismail, uh, they held a, a press conference on the oh. steps of City Hall. And, uh, you know, I'm going to show you the pictures. They, you know, I'm going to post it for people to see it. But here he is being choked. Oh, wow. On Step City Hall. And there's video. I didn't know that. Yeah, there's video. And, you know, but and, the, and, but now, but and now the mayor said he didn't send anybody down there to choke him out. But th this was after, this was uh, 2015. So this was uh, just before the new year. And this was after, um, I mean, a string of murders. Women, in silence. Women should be very afraid. The, our, our young girls should be very afraid. I think a lot of people this should culture, be afraid. This culture, this culture. I think a lot of people should. We senior, did, our seniors should we be very not, afraid. We did not create this culture. We did not create. You and I and the citizens of North did not Look, get up. Women and being this intimidated, culture. seniors being I know intimidated. I didn't do it. 
you know, all of this is happening right now. And you know what? I just think that everybody in Newark is, uh, they're they operating like as if they're battered people. Well, like, what did I, mean, I, I don't understand do it. Remember, I, I, what did I say to you, Kevin? I said the relationship between this administration and the residents of Newark is like an abusive relationship. Well, guess what? That's what I said to you, I mean, right? I, I'm not. Well, I'm not putting up with that. So it's so an abusive day, relationship. At the end of the day, listen. I, I think if if we are wrong about something, I think everybody has the right to get on the air and say we are wrong. But I doubt that very seriously. <laughs> the track record speaks for itself. Okay, you got people working in city hall because they have had sexual relationships, making more, more making more money than the people that have been here for twenty five years. You got new people coming in the building with no skill set, making one hundred and fifty and one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars. You got people with no education, and when I say no education, I'm not talking about like no education. I'm talking about no education, running departments. You have. People that are being moved around and given all kinds of money to, to, drive, to drive our city in the future. And guess what? They, what they're doing is driving in the ground. I mean, and then what you know what you know what you're supposed to do, Eric? I'll tell you what you're supposed to do. You're not supposed to bring this up. Oh no, that no. But that. guess what? I know that I am 54 and for almost two decades, every time I went to work, I had those people banging down the door. Even when we had the highest growth, the high, the, the lowest unemployment, the lowest crime, the highest economic boom, it was never good enough, right? So you know. Oh, and then this is another thing I heard, and I, I got to tell you, this is I, 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 your show has to ever get over with. But, <laughs> but this is the other thing I heard that the young man, Mitty Baraka, told him the reason why they were coming up there to speak out against what they thought was failed leadership. Was that they were getting paid? Well, but stop again. I'm gonna go Are back. Are you crazy? Oh, wait a minute. I'm gonna go back to this abusive relationship. Are See, you crazy? When you got no, but what you have is denial, That's right? Not and denial. in a, it is denial. <laughs> in an abusive relationship, the, the 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 man who's abusing his wife is in denial. It's not him. It's her. It's something that she did. It's not something that he did, and she has to get better. She has to do something oh, I differently. See yeah, right, you see, right. and that's and that and, and and so that's it with them. It's not that uh, 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 this administration is screwing up. It's not that they lied to the people. It's not that they're um, uh, they're they're uh, uh, incompetent. It has nothing to do with that. It's that these people don't understand me. And because you don't understand me, I get to jump in your face like they did with, like he did with me, Nira. That was horrible what they did. To right. Her. But, but, but that's exactly what it is. And I'm telling you. Um, this is the thing. What, what did the other men do? Oh, I forgot. They were securing him. Now, imagine if they didn't, she, he didn't have the security. I think Manira probably would have dusted him. Oh, I think he would. I think she would. Well, that's why he's got the security. <laughs> I think Manira. Oh, no, I wouldn't even I, mess with Manira. That's dude, my girl. You dude. know. And listen, even when she's angry at us, we're like, all right, Manira, no, you, you're killing man. us now. You're killing us. No, no, no. But, I mean, we have people that disagree with us every day. You know, but that doesn't stop us from helping their programs. That doesn't stop us from encouraging them to be better than they are. That doesn't stop us from helping their well, kids. Well, you know why? Because because at the end of the day, uh, the thing that we're fighting for is bigger than you, bigger than me. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And it's the community. But what they're fighting for is for them. That that is the biggest difference. Oh yeah, that's oh, oh they listen. I got it. I got. They were once with us, but now they're with them. Right. You know what I'm saying? That they were. They're not. They're not for black people. Now, I don't want anybody at home to actually think that they really believe what they're saying. Wait a minute. Did you see what I posted <laughs> on my page again? What did you post the, on your page? I told you. The all black. Oh, the all black. <laughs> no, and, I, and, I, and I actually gave a definition for the all black. And what's that? Hold on. I got I to gotta pull it up, man. The internet here sometimes is not as quick as I, as I want it to be. So you guys bear with me. Um, and for you guys, because a bunch of people liked it. Um... But they, but we have to, and then you know another guy on my on my page. He came on. He said, you know, there is no such thing as the alt black. And and I said, no, no, no. That's oh. So here's my definition: alt black. It's a noun. It's a black person who operates outside of the best interest of the greater black community. Hmm. Say. Uh-huh. Right. So now he takes issue you with. Send that to me. I like that. Dude. That's pretty good. Did you hey, understand? Look, man, I'm watching you. But do you under- I'm watching Dude. you. That was good. <laughs> but, do, but do you understand what I'm saying? So you can't good. deny you can't deny that there are black people who are operating outside of the best interest of the greater black community. You can't deny that. And I, I said to the to the guy but who said there's pseudo, no such thing. But some of our pseudo nationalists have done it for years. Absolutely. Some but we but we have to begin yeah, to look, identify them. We have day. to. That's right. But we have to be able to classify them. 
Hey, listen. We can't let them hide listen. amongst us I, anymore, man. I, I, we have to put that scarlet letter on them. I, and we have to, and you know what? To the point where where people want to go, there he is, <laughs> there he is. That's but that's what we have to do to run them out of our hey community. Hey man, listen. You know, I got to tell you something. I am enormously fatigued. I, I, you know, I I didn't want to go there, but we have to speak truth to power. We do. We Kev. have to talk about things that are relevant in our community, and you know, empowering our community, and listening to our community, and trusting our community, and living in our community. And when you are giving uh, the leadership positions, we are leaders. Mm -hmm. That comes with a sense of responsibility. So let's start here. I am not a perfect human being. I apologize to you, Eric, if I have ever demonstrated a lack of leadership when it comes to our relationship and I will live be, it, from this day forward I will try to live in a principled and valued way so I can better impact your quality of life so when I'm a leader and you vote for me I need to be in that mind frame Absolutely. not in the mind frame is that they, my, they, are, they are our haters we don't like them those people talking about me oh, we don't, it's, it's back to them it's not about us it's back to them see and that's the thing that language I'm not giving them that language that's the language they're selling we got enemies. How the hell are we enemies when we're investors in this community? We employ people in this community. We live in this community. We go to church in this community. How are we haters when every day we get up, we pick the trash up in front of our houses? We talk to our neighbors. Yeah. You know, how are we enemies because we disagree with the fact that we don't believe you have the capacity to leave us, lead us into the 21st prove century? Prove me wrong. Oh, you know, all you, he has you, to do but no, but you sold that you did. Now, and then yeah. all he has to do is prove us wrong. Yeah, you know, I don't enemy. have to be a hater. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but to, to say that we're the enemy because we're challenging you to do better and be better. That's right. Right? Now, I'll sit in a room with anybody and have an articulated conversation about how we can grow this city. But you know why? Because, see, it's about, per it's not, it, what's that saying? It's about um, principles, not personality. Right. And I live by that. I live by that. So at the end of the day, you know, I am not, you know, going to be quiet about that. You know, and, and I, you know, I, I asked Gail to bear with me. <laughs> because I'm just not swallowing that. Because we've seen the negative outcomes of that. We've seen it all around the world. We've seen it all around the world, so that's what my that's what my issue is right now. So yeah. I got I'm really fatigued. I have battle fatigued on this thing. This thing I, I hate talking about it now because, you know, it's just for, it's fatigue. I have fatigue. You talking about 130 days, fatigue? Well, I got three goddamn three years of fatigue. <laughs> no, I, I get you, man. Excuse my language. I can't I get personally. You. Yeah, apologize. you know, and, and you have to censor me sometimes when no, I'm talking. No, no, that's okay. <laughs> I'll I'll pay the bill with <laughs> the FCC. Because okay, they're going to be coming. They're going to be coming at us, man. I hear the <laughs> knock on the door now. <laughs> <laughs> but right. we'll put a jar. We'll put a right. curse jar. Yeah, I would have, have been five dollar jar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I've done well these last. No, you have, man. Yeah. But but you know what? This stuff it gets to you, man. So we can have. Look, but you're the hater. But you're the. But hater. I'm the hater. You know, but what I tell you, I hate. It's what it's it's what it's what Trump is doing to the media, right? It's what Trump is doing to the media. Oh, they hate me. They, I'm the, I'm, it's, this is the largest witch hunt. I mean, it's the same thing happening here. I hear the same language. But but here's the funny thing, right? For all of you all who, who agree with these guys that I'm a hater, they're the ones who are reaching into your pockets every day, right? And paying enormous salaries to incompetent people that are friends of theirs. They're the ones who are getting developers in chicken wings and getting them to <laughs> fork over money to them, right? I'm not asking for anything. I don't want a job, I don't want a contract, I don't want anything. All I want them to do is clean the filthy lot that's next to you. All I want them to do is stop the murders that are occurring. All I want them to do is educate these babies so that they can compete in the 21st century. But for the people at the Board of Education who I critique, I'm called a hater. For the people down at City Hall who I critique, I'm called a hater. I want you guys to understand that. Think about that. Look, meanwhile, their pockets are bulging. They're literally bulging with money, and these are people. That really, these are people that really, outside of you know government, or, you know, being some sort of government facility, we they couldn't survive. Oh, they couldn't survive. Oh, they never survived. Listen, man, they couldn't. They couldn't get a job more than twenty five thousand yeah, dollars a year in the real world. Know, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, you talking about living off the dole, man? I mean, why? Wow, no, I mean, no, really. none of none of them can. I mean, I mean, come on, I, they couldn't spend a day 
doing what we do every day. I mean, I can imagine taking one of them into a client and having a global conversation about how to, you, you know, get this company to move into the 21st century and all the int intricacies of how to do it. I could imagine if they, I could, even on the education discussion, sh it shocks. I mean, on some of the, you know, the stuff that we're talking about. And, and, well, and speaking of education, I still haven't seen Reggie Bledsoe's. Uh, He's uh, not going to apologize. No, right. That means that he has no respect. So I want you again understand right. what's going on, people. Understand what's going on. He's now playing the victim. Why they picking? I, I, it goes back to that hater thing. And I want you guys to understand that we have a dysfunctional, abusive relationship where they are the abuser and you're the abused. That's what's going on, and they just don't think they think they can kick the crap out of you, and you'll never leave. Well, listen, You'll you, never have, leave. you have people that worked in City Hall for 25 years. I mean, what? they can't even talk to each other. They're called to, they're called to these cult meetings every week, and they're, they're told that they ain't no oh, good. I mean, and, I mean, I mean it's so really weird. Remember I told you. I call them cult meetings. Remember I told you at not, not the last um, the, uh, uh, State of the City address he just had, um, the <laughs> previous one that the mayor had? where he alluded to the fact that uh, we may want to temporarily give uh, control of the school system over to him and that it become an appointed board until such time that things got straightened out and then he would, he, he would uh, uh, support it going back to being an elected board. I was told that he's been holding meetings about that. I want you to now. I don't understand what is required. Is it something that the council has to do, or is it is it a referendum for the voters to decide? But whatever that is, guys, I'm telling you, that is the next thing coming down the. Well, uh, guess because what? I told you, guess what? what I say? There are these three, and and if you listen to me for three years, I literally from the day the guy got um, was inaugurated, I asked, what is it that we expect him to do? And I'm asking you, has he fulfilled the things that you expected him to do? Not what he told you he was able to do and only able to do because of uh, uh, restrictions from extenuating or external circumstances. I'm asking you whatever it is that you had expected him to do, or in the words of Ronald Reagan, are you better off now <laughs> than you were before? you got to ask yourself those questions, right? It's not an emotional thing. It's, it, it, it really is a quality of life thing. It's a life or death thing for our children. We have, we, we have these exhaustive conversations. We did, a, I think, an amazing job, Kev, when we did Education Week yeah. to try to lay out for you the value, the importance of education, and what happens when you don't have it. Uh, Rashan Hassan and I, last week, we unpacked this whole idea of, of pre-K and the importance of it. And if you don't, if you don't have the funds and the ability to put your children into pre-K programs, three and four years old, they wind up with a 30 million word deficit when compared wow. to kids in the suburbs mm -hmm. the same age. Well, it, listen. If These are real if, things, if, guys. If the so I'm not, it's if not the a citizens of New York stand by and allow any of that nonsense to happen, well, they, they surely don't care about their children or their future. I mean, really, it's based on, it's, it's, it's the human outcry has to come from them. But guess what? I guarantee you there will be no people moving into the city. Because just look at the leadership that's presently, some of the leadership that's presently representing us on school board. It is outright. This will never happen in any progressive city in America. Dude that can't read past the sixth grade reading level, and I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I love him to come sit here. I'll give him a book. Let him read. Let him read a paragraph. See, I'm not going to tell you anything that's not true. He can't You're read past a sixth mean, grade. Now. No, I'm not being mean, Kev. But it's the, it, because, well, see, that the, same this guy. Is what they, this is what they think. I mean, I'm going to ask you a question. Them. You're a business guy, right? You're a capitalist, right? Trying to make money. <laughs> trying to make money. If you were sitting across from somebody who was negotiating a business deal with you and you pushed a contract across for them to read and they couldn't. Well, they wouldn't be in the room. With they me. wouldn't be in the room with you. And so I'm saying that guy, Marquise Lewis, the president of the Board of Education, is the guy, the chief negotiator for us. He's the guy that we're now going to be sending down to Trenton. <laughs> I want you to understand that. You see, but, I'm, but, but, but I think. am the hater. We should all hate uh, that. Uh, well, I'm going to get you a t-shirt, Truth Seeker. <laughs> we should all hate that. Oh, boy. That's going to be funny. And until, and, and until we raise the bar, 
on what we expect from our elected officials, we'll get what we get. I'm glad I got some rest last night. I wasn't ready for you today. <laughs> well, listen, at the end of the day, I know time is almost up. You know, it all begins with the people at home. It, it does. All begins, it does, Kevin. You know, this whole narrative about, you know, I, I knew you since I was five years old. I got a lot of people I knew since I was five years old, but they're not running my business. You know what I mean? I'm not bringing them into my business. I, you know, I'll find something else for them to do. But some people just aren't good at this business. This is a very... And we just, we're seeing it with the President of the United States. Right. Some people, this is a very complex business. There's so many different moving parts. There's so many different pieces that we have to evaluate from the human perspective, from the social perspective, from the financial perspective. And all I'm seeing now is a bunch of weak deal making, a bunch of bad talking, a bunch of garbage. You know what I mean? We just buying trash every day. Every day we get up in the morning, never mind about picking up the trash in front of your house. We just buying it every day. We financing trash every day. Here we are. And you know, I'm about sick of it though. But you and know then, what you know, And then when you have conversations with people, they say, oh, they just don't like uh, the person. I, well, you know what? Based on what I'm saying, I don't. I don't. <laughs> I don't like what they're doing. I don't like what you're doing. <laughs> Get the hell out of here. So listen, we're going to continue to have conversations about the national stuff because it's important. It's important for you guys to understand it. But what I'm saying, and I'm going to always say this, Kev. In as much as we get them focused on what Donald Trump is doing, he's over in the Middle East and doing all that kind of stuff. If folks are not taking their business on their own block, you know what I mean? Like I, trying to get them to understand what Donald Trump is doing in 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 uh, in the Middle East, let alone in Washington, I think is futile. So we'll give you this information. We'll talk about national issues. We'll talk more about state issues. Um, County issues, but all politics are local. Well, we do talk about. No, we. I'm saying we do, but I'm telling folks. Look, at the end of the day, all politics are local. And what? What? Look, this is what I'd like to do. Look, we don't have, a, the, a, we don't have the media outlets that we used to have anyway. Listen, the Star Ledger. If man, if the Star Ledger was active, man, they'd be writing about this stuff every day. Yeah. Right. But, that's why we yeah. have the press. But but this is what this is what I'm hoping that we're going to do. But I'll, I'll be talking to you, Ian. I'll be talking to Judge T, who's going to become a, oh, okay. a regular on the show. Oh, really? Okay. And, and Rashan. Um, and then we're going to have to start to localize uh, more of our conversation because these elections that are going to be coming up, the gubernatorial election, and then right into right after the general, right into yeah. the the municipal <laughs> election, right, which is going to determine a tremendous amount. So we're going to be spending a lot it of time. Really, is going to Newark is going to have to decide where it wants to be twenty years. Well, Newark, Irvington, yeah. East Orange, East Orange election is coming That's right, up. That's coming up, right? Yeah, East Orange coming up. East Orange election. The primary East is in June. Is, is in June. June. It's in June. Okay. It's in June. The general is in is in. Um, so it, wins in the November. primary basically. Yeah, wins. basically wins, right? But we need to be having those conversations, and you guys need to join us in the conversation. I don't know this Newark that I'm seeing now. I mean, thank God. Um, for Cassandra, and thank God for um, a lot of people. But you know there. what, though, I even got on them because I said, "What took you so long?" Yeah, but guess what? You know what? I mean, I'm glad I, they're can here. I be honest with you? Can I be honest with you? Go ahead. I think that's the that's the wrong uh, question to ask them. Okay. I, I'm gonna tell you what I believe. I believe that they are decent human beings, decent ladies, right? And they wanted to give they wanted to give them an opportunity to see. And I, I get look, I give her credit. For, I give them credit for that. Like, listen, everybody wanted to see. Even I wanted to see. Even you. If they, listen, we always are going to respect a good job. Right? I, come on. I, I mean, I think that okay. everybody needs to get be given a chance to see if they can do the job. No, now know? we see. Yeah. Well, but now we see. And so now I think is the time for truth telling. Mm -hmm. Now is the time for truth telling. Not emotionalism. Whatever happened in Newark was the bellwether of what happened around the world. What happened in the country. Newark was always in the forefront uh, of the civil rights movement. I mean, on the forefront of the education um, debate. I mean, Newark is just a phenomenal uh, town with a lot of people that have contributed an awful lot to where we are right now. And, you know, and, and I'm a native son. You're a native son. You know, we're invested. And, and I'm going to speak my mind. If you don't like it, it's too bad. But well, listen. <laughs> Today is Monday. We got the week started on the Eric Dawson Radio Show. This is Eric. This is Kevin. And we're out. Bye bye. This has been the Eric Dawson Radio Show. It's not just about Eric's opinion, it's about understanding what's really going on. Tune in Monday through Friday, 10 o'clock a.m. Just continuing to talk about what uh, elected leadership isn't doing without talking about the people who elected the elected leadership and what they're not doing to hold them accountable. And